It's five o'clock in the afternoon, five hours after May Grant's sensational escape from the women's jail. And during those five hours, the intensive, widespread search for her has gained momentum. City and state police have been alerted. Teletypes have pounded their message to police headquarters across the country. Radio description has been broadcast. And May's picture carried on the front pages of the press. Well, those developments are a matter of public knowledge. But as yet, unknown to the public, a startling new development. A few moments ago, a police car drove rapidly through a narrow street on the waterfront, stopped at the entrance to the United Machine Company dock, and right now, Police Lieutenant Tragg, Prosecutor Apt, and Defense Lawyer Mason and his secretary are walking through the company storage yard towards the dock, which juts out over the water. And as Tragg turns down a passageway between canvas-covered machinery... We go out on the dock. My boy's waiting where the workman found the note. Uh, you could have had him brought to us just as easily. Uh-uh, Mr. Apt. I'm not buying what that note seems to say yet. Well, neither am I, Lieutenant. Well, I'll look this over firsthand. Warm enough, fellow. Warm enough, but scared. He bluffed Apt into letting us go, but Tragg... Tragg is up to something, Perry. Well, let's hope he's bluffing, too. Now, let's hope. But did you see his face? Yeah, and since Tragg insisted on bringing us along, maybe that's a break for us. At least that won't be able to cover up the note. Now I wish I hadn't tipped off Jake. Come on, Mason. All right. Walk on the other side of me, Della. Out of the wind. Wind's strong out here over the water. Oh, that water looks cold. Yes, can't imagine anyone in their right mind jumping in, eh, Mr. I didn't say that. No, I did. Well, where is Martin, Lieutenant? He said about halfway out past the watchman's shack. Mm-hmm. Good go in the watchman's office out of this wind. You can't. I'm going to take a look. Hey, Lieutenant. Okay, Martin, we see you. Oh, Mr. Mason in the street, too, huh? Hello, Martin. In the street, I thought it was reporters. No, we decided not to notify the press. Until we find out just uh, what did happen, Martin. Where's the guy who found the note? I had let him go on his round. He's a watchman. Well, what about... He stuffed right back where he found it, Lieutenant. Let's take a look. Uh, just a second, Mr. Abt. Martin, anybody see Mrs. Grant? Uh, nobody. The watchman said she could have got out on the dock without him seeing her. He's the watchman, isn't he? Yes, sir, Mr. Abt. Watchman, isn't he? Yes, sir, Mr. Abt. Watchman, isn't he? Yes, sir, Mr. Abt. But this is a big yard, and since they weren't loading cargo today, there wasn't anybody much around. Oh, no. sent for divers? Yeah. Notify the highway patrol? Uh-huh. There's a phone in the watchman's shack. Check with identification for me. Yes, sir, Lieutenant. For what? Tell them you're checking for me. I don't want to explain now. Trag has got a little secret. Not so little. Okay, Lieutenant Trag, but let me show you where that... Uh, just stuff... tell me. Near the railing by that upright timer. Okay. The watchman touched it, but I was careful putting it back. Yeah, all right. Now, let's go. Well, there's her purse. How do you know it's hers? Excuse me. It looks like hers. The picture's supposed to be under her purse. Yep. I don't want to smear these prints up anymore. There's no envelope, Lieutenant. Okay, I'll slide it in that. I left it sticking out far enough to see. Dora's picture. Yeah. Look on the back. This looks like the only way out. Signed, Dorothy May Grant. What's that, Chief? It's an air pump for the diver. Oh, I see. That Mrs. Grant's mm-hmm. riding track? Beats me. Mason? Looks like... Bella? Looks like her riding. Looks like the only way out. I won't believe it until they find her body. Maybe they won't. Even if she did jump. Huh? Take a look at the water, Mr. Rapp. Look down. Oh. Swift current, huh? Head straight for the main channel. Channel goes out to sea. If she did jump, they might not recover the body. Not unless it got wedged on a piling. Oh, but that's ridiculous, Lieutenant Tragg. She didn't commit suicide. Seemed positive, Mr. Rapp. Strangely positive in the face of that note. That note is a plant. Mm, possibly. I don't but... see it either, Mason. Although it would make it a lot easier for her if we did believe it. She had no motive for committing suicide. Oh, I think Tragg has the motive in his hand. Well, this picture? In a way. I'm talking about Dory. She had her freedom, but it was an empty freedom. She couldn't have Dory. She couldn't go back to her husband. So what was there left? Certain death in the electric chair if she was recaptured. The lonely life of a fugitive if she weren't. The chair? You said she was innocent, Miss. I'm talking about the way May Grant felt. 
course, I know that Apt has been bluffing, but she didn't. Bluffing, Mason? About your certainty of getting a conviction. Mrs. Grant believed that you were sure to convict him, Mr. Apt. And so I was, but... Now, see here, Mason, nothing you can say changes a thing. Uh Uh-uh. We weren't buying this. Yes, Mason. Hmm? A reporter. Oh, Jake. Hi, Jake. How did he... Well, 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 big deal, huh, Lieutenant? Hello, Mr. Mason. Hi, Jake. What are you doing here, Jacobson? Any law against a reporter covering a story? How'd you know there would be a story? Besides, I thought you were a columnist, Jacobson. I am, Mr. Rapt. I was planning a waterfront series. Uh Uh-huh. And you just happened to be here getting color. How'd you guess it, Lieutenant? Who tipped you off, Jacobson? Now, gentlemen, you don't expect me to... What's the story? No story. Oh, Mr. Rapp. No story. Craig, have this man escorted out of here. Oh, wait, Ap. Why not tell Jacobson about the suicide note? Suicide note? Shut up, Mason. Hey, I smell a big one. Come on. Not Mrs. Grant's suicide. That's right, Jake. They found him. Craig, get this man out of here. That's no use, Mr. Rapp. I think maybe this was planted, too, but it's too late to stop. But if this story reaches the press... A certain number of people will believe she did jump in the river. It has reached the press. So you might as well give me the details. Well, there's a question of tales. Well, there's a question of tales. Well, there's a question as to whether or not she did jump in, Jake. Yeah? The official attitude seems to be that she didn't. Oh? However, it seems to me... And to me? ...that she might have preferred death to living as a fugitive. You've got a point. Jacobson, you can't put forward that hypothesis. Huh? If you know what's good for you, you'll print only the official view. You see, Jake, Mr. Rapp is afraid that a lot of people will believe she did commit suicide. And that she was hounded by the prosecution. Nothing of the sort. Finding Mrs. Grant might very well depend on a tip from an alerted public. If they think she's dead, they... they... know of that, Ap. Yeah, and prosecutor or no prosecutor, you can't tell me what to print. I, I wouldn't think of it, Jacobson. But your duty to your readers... My duty is to print the news, both sides. And let me worry about my duty. But... I'll let it go, Mr. Ab. Hey, Lieutenant. Uh, yeah, Martin... Want to come here a minute? It's important. I'll go with you, Lieutenant. I'll come, too. You will not. And as for you, Mason, you stay here. I'm cold. You won't be long. You fill Jacobson in on the details, Mason. Want to come in the watch house, Lieutenant? Okay. It's all a plant, Lieutenant. Mason tipped Jacobson off. That's what we think, Mr. Rat. But if Martin's got what I'd say, then go on, he said. I'll get the door. Okay, Martin. It's what you wanted, Lieutenant. They made H. Uh, Identification is sure. Well, that's that. Well, Mr. Rapp, you want to take Mason now? Are you sure of this, Craig? Been working on it since the break. It all checks out. Had to be sure Mason had a connection with H. He does. We can take him in. Now, wait. Mm. Let's take full advantage, Lieutenant Craig. Harry Mason has been riding for a fall for a long, long time. Let's make it a real fall. Uh, You can have him followed when he leaves? Well, sure, but why let him leave? Give him an hour while I get a warrant ready. Oh, we don't need a warrant. We've got him. No, no, Lieutenant. An arrest here when he's already in custody? Well, that's hardly news, do you think? There's a reporter here already. Mason's friend. No. Let's make a real thing of this, Lieutenant. He might even try to run away. Hmm. Kick him while he's down. Huh? You like Mason, don't you, Lieutenant? He's not a bad guy. Even if he did engineer that break. Well, I don't like him. And as for kicking him while he's down, I'll stomp him, Lieutenant, every chance I get. Understand? It's clear. Good. Now, you go out there and inform Mr. Mason that he's as free as a bird. But make certain he's followed. Meanwhile, I'll... May I use this phone, Sergeant Martin? Well, Lieutenant Tragg wasn't bluffing, was he? The mysterious man called H has been identified, and a link found between him and Perry Mason. And Apt isn't bluffing either. He fully intends to arrest Perry Mason, and under the most humiliating circumstances possible. Well, what do you think is going to happen?
But there is one development even Perry Mason doesn't know about. A development that's going to have a vitally important effect on the lawyer himself. In fact, right now, as Perry and his secretary approach the entrance to his office building, that development is already beginning to have an effect for... Hello. Yes, Chief. Uh, don't look now, but we're being followed. Oh? So that's why you got out of the cab on the corner. Yes. So when I open the lobby door, look at the reflection in the glass. I'll hold it at an angle so you can see. You ready? Okay. Well? I'm not certain, but it seems to me there were two men behind No, us. don't look back. It's easier to ditch them if they think we don't suspect. Police? Hmm. Then Trad does know something. Maybe. Maybe. It's just a precaution. Maybe at... No, Ab knows you won't leave May. Mm. But this could make it awful hard for you to catch your bus. Mm. Evening paper. Get your evening paper. Hmm? That's the first time I ever heard the man at the cigar stand selling newspapers. Evening paper. Just out. Latest edition. There's nobody in the lobby, but I should think he's... A new man. What? Be sure and get your paper. Let's buy one, Don. Oh, but you... Give you a chance to look behind us. All right. I'll uh, take an evening blade, please. Well, Mr. Mason. Yes, yes. I'll take one of these off the top. Oh, uh, wait, Mr. Mason. What? The uh, record just came out. Oh, well, thank you, but I always read them. I uh, haven't opened them yet. Now, just a second. No, no, the blade is all right. I always read them. Really, Mr. Mason, you would much rather have a record. The record's the latest edition. Just a second. I'll open a new bundle. All right. If you think I should take one. I'd certainly advise it. Mm. Stella? They didn't come in the lobby. Mm, well, they could be waiting outside and watching. Uh, here you are, Mr. Mason. Just came out, you say. Why, anybody can see. I'm just opening them, Mr. Mason. Use my knife to cut the cord. Well, lots of excitement, eh, Mr. Mason? Your uh, client escaping and all? Mm-hmm. I'll just take off the wrapping paper. Yes, sir. And now the story of her suicide wonder what the real story is. Harry. Uh, just take the one off the top, Mr. Mason. Thanks. Here. Thank you, sir. Well, that one's all smeared. What? May's picture's all smeared. We'll get another one. Uh, Miss Street. Yes? Uh, that's a special edition. Oh, now, come on. They're all just alike, except there'll be one with a better picture of May. Uh, no. No, that's, um, that's a special edition. Got a special story? The real story. The paper on top? Yes, sir. Thanks. On what page? Page 10, Mr. Mason. I was going to call your particular attention to page 10. Oh. Thanks. You understand? Thanks. You're welcome, Mr. Mason. More than welcome. You understand? Yes. Well, the elevator's down. What is that man, Perry? Well, we're selling newspapers. Now, look. Come on, Dollar. We'll have to use this self-service elevator after six. Press the button. Press the button. Press the button. Open it, open it. Wait till we get to the office. Oh, Perry, you honestly. I can't tell. Somebody might get on while we're reading that special story. I wish the elevator would hurry. We're almost there. Now, do you have those notes ready for me to pick up? Yes, of course. Aren't you even interested in what's on page 10? Well, Keith, I'm also interested in those notes. I wish I were going with you. Well, it'd be hard enough for me to get out of town without worrying about you. Did you get a check cashed? Yes, this morning. Did your bag all packed? Packed and checked from the bus terminal. I bet everything's all wrinkled. You packed in such a hurry. Oh, well, my toothbrush will be all right anyway. Hey, you want me to hold the new uh, No, no, I you? can handle it. Thank you, Dollar. Okay. You go ahead. Turn on the light. Be sure the latch is on. Right. See it? I was just opening the paper. Oh, you're impossible. A little piece of paper. It's put between the sheets of the... 
it? What does it say? Mrs. Grant is safe. Oh. She is in the place you know. So much is accomplished. Now you alone can complete the fight. God be with you. H. Oh, thank heaven she's safe. Harry. Who is H? And where did... I see. You don't even want to tell me. Hmm? No, Della. I don't want anyone to know. Now, hand me the desk lighter, hmm? Here you are. You gonna burn it? Yes. Well, I am if I can get this lighter to work. Oh, I forgot to fill it. Oh, right, take it easy, Della. Take it easy. Work that time. There. Now, give me the answer. Well, I wish I were going with no, you. Ah, Della, no. You got your bus ticket? Yes. Oh, uh, get those notes for me, hmm? All right. Harry. No, oh, never mind. I've prepared a memorandum about office routine while I'm gone. I'll stick it under my blotter. Can I go to the bus station with you? Yes, yes. You can also help me ditch those detectives, if they were detectives. Sounds like Paul. He wasn't supposed to... Let him in, Dylan. Yes, I'm going. Paul. Hi, beautiful. I was trying to reach you, Perry. Took a chance and came up. Yeah, we just got in. Yeah, I got a story for you. Maybe it's trouble. I don't know. Well, neither do I until you tell me, Paul. Well, that's why I'm here. Does H mean anything to you, Perry? H? Perry? Maybe. It depends. Why? Well, the cops have been looking for a guy known as H for ten years. That isn't news, Paul. Ever since he broke out of the pen while awaiting an appeal for a new trial, that isn't news either. The cops figured H had found a nice safe hole for himself someplace and pulled it in over him. They've just about given up on finding him. That's history, Paul, not news. This is news. Trag spotted H today. Spotted him? Yeah, you remember. Perry took over his case ten years ago to get him a new trial. Wait a minute, so that's what Trag was... Huh? Well, Trag was there when May escaped in the fake ambulance. They get H? No, no, they're looking for him. It appears he'd crawled back into his nice, safe hideout. Well, that's something... Yeah, that's yeah, nice for H. But they're not interested in him so much as they are in putting the arm on the man he did the job for. Paul. Wheels are spinning off of fast, Perry. I don't know who it is, but they're fixing to arrest some very big guy. Now, I can be all wrong, but if Trag spotted H, Trag could find a connection from you to H. Trag can add two and two as fast as the next guy. Maybe a little bit faster. But that can't be. Perry was with Trag and Apt until just an hour ago. The wheels started spinning an hour ago. Well, if they intended to arrest Perry, why didn't they do it while he was right there? Apt. What? Frederick Apt. Apt likes to make a big splash. It would suit him fine for me to run. I bet you were followed. I was. Apt would prefer to break in here with a warrant and a riot squad and put... All right, change your plans, Donna. Are you leaving yes, now? Yes, yes. How much time, Paul? You got any idea? Not much. All right, take a look down the street. So right, I can see. I'll get the notes. No, Perry. Della, wait, wait. Maybe it's better not. Perry. Yeah? Looks like a police car. Two police cars. All right, let's go. Perry. We'll go out through the basement. Uh, come with me, Paul. Right. Well, what about the notes? Keep them. If I should get picked up, I can't let Aft see those. If I'm not picked up, you can mail them to me. All right, step on, Paul. I'll contact you later, Della. But, Perry! Is, I'll contact you if I can. I'll see you somewhere. Yes. See you somewhere. Oh, Perry, be careful. Please be careful. Well, I can tell you this. Frederick Apt has planned most carefully. And he has no intention whatsoever of letting this opportunity to humiliate Perry Mason slip through his fingers. So, as you can guess, there'll be excitement and important developments of plenty in our next episode. Join us tomorrow by all means. It's immediately after the close of our last episode, when Perry Mason, warned he is under threat of immediate arrest, left his secretary in his office, and with private detective Paul Drake, descended to the basement. Right now, as he and Paul start through the basement towards the exit to the street. Paul, are you sure that was a police car you saw from the office window? Two of them. All right, then wait. There might be others you didn't see. Here. 
Uh, help me drag the packing case. Huh? What's with the packing case? You. Come on. Oh. Give it up to the sidewalk window. And then you get on top of it and take a look outside. Hey, what am I supposed to do? Jump up on top of it? Almost as tall as I am. Never mind. I'll boost you. Yeah. Here. You ready? Yeah. All right. Here you go. Hey, hey, not so fast. Forget your dignity. Whoa. Uh, the wind is so dusty, I can't see anything. Well, rub it off. Well? Yeah. Yeah, I got a good view. Hey, good thing we did take a look. Two of Trag's boys guarding the basement exit. More guys coming. You won't get through this door, Perry. Mm. If they can help it, I won't walk out of any of the other doors either. Looks like they got you boxed in. What did you say? Huh? I said, looks like they got you boxed in. They jumped down. What? Stop talking. Get down, Paul. Okay. What are you up to, Perry? Hey, beating your hand against that packing case won't help you. No. You better go back to your office and get arrested with all the dignity you can. What are you doing with that packing case? That's it. Packing case. It's empty. Well, of course it's empty. And it's uh, big enough for a man. Oh, Perry, you can't get away with that. Come on, help me. Here, drag that case out from the wall, will you, Paul? Move now, Paul. I'm going to use this service phone. Yeah. Stella? No, no, I'm downstairs in the basement. They're sealing off the building. I have... Della, wait. Don't ask questions. Get hold of the porter. The porter. You'll have to locate him somewhere in the building. That's right. Have him bring a portable loading platform to my office. Yes, that's right. A portable loading platform into the office. You mean down here, don't you? I mean my office. All right, now you and I can get this case upstairs in the freight elevator. Lawyer arrested while carrying a huge packing case through Got a few minutes. Try going to have to post him in. Now, come on, Paul. Stop crabbing and get your back into this. Again, my back's killing me. A little exercise good for you, Paul. A little. Resting a boxcar all over the room. Come on in, Joe. Harry, a packing case. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, just close your mouth, Della, and open the law library door, huh? Harry, are you going to try to get the door, out? Door, Della, please, quick. All right, over near the book, Paul. All right, now, let it down easy. Oh, my back is... Ouch! What's the matter, Paul? Caught my finger under the edge. You should be more careful. Uh, Della, did you... Yes, yes, I did. I got a porter. A porter? Well, just one. And Joe said the other boy went to eat and he can't get back inside. The police have the whole building roped off. Joe will be enough. Paul here can help him. Oh, Wait no. for Joe in the office, Della, and don't let him in until Paul and I get this packed with books. Books? That's what I said. Huh? But, Perry... You'll tell me when, won't you, Yes, Perry? yes, I will. All right, get the lid off that thing, Paul. Ah, uh, we'll use the bigger books, huh? You, uh, really going to put books in? Uh, what else? Okay, you're running this show. How many? Just cover the bottom. Yeah, but if... And don't take any time to stack them neatly. I'm not Won't work, Perry. Uh -huh. Make a little bet? No, not with you. Well, are these enough? Yes, yes. I think that was Joe probably at the door. Uh, Della! Yes, he's here. Are you ready? Open the door for him, Paul. Okay. All right, come on in, Joe. Bring in a loading platform, Mr. Drake. Oh, by all means. Now open the door wide, Mr. Drake. Now, you don't have to tell me to be careful, Mr. Street. I won't scratch the door, Jim. Hey, that's a big crate, Mr. Mason. You moving out a section of the files? Not exactly, Joe. Just books. Books? Books. Well, if you fill that big crate full of books, it'll be so heavy, I don't know... It won't I... be full of books, see? Oh, yeah. Not more than the bottom is covered. Well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Mason, you don't need such a big packing case. I'll duck down to the basement and get a little... No. Case. But, Mr. We, uh, like this case. 
At least Mr. Mason likes it. Why? Uh, just humor me, Joe, huh? Okay, Mr. Mason. I'll put the top on. Say, did you hear all the excitement downstairs? The cops? Oh, uh, wait. Uh, uh, Joe, you and Miss Street, go and wait in the other office. Hmm? Huh? Mr. Drake and I will nail the top on. But Mr. Mason... Uh, outside, Joe. And uh, give me your hammer. Okay, Mr. Mason, if you... Okay, Mr. Mason, here. Thank you. Oh. Come on, Joe. We'll leave these gentlemen to their work. Yeah, there's nails stuck in the top already, Perry. That's good. Sit down, Joe. It won't take them a minute, I hope. Yes, ma'am. Lots of excitement, you say? Oh, yes, ma'am. The cops have got somebody trapped in a building, a bandit or something, I guess. I don't know. Oh. If I didn't know Mr. Mason a favor, I ought to get down and see if the cops need me. But you said this was important. Yes, Joe. Mr. Mason should have let me put that He can do it. It ain't dignified. Well. Those books must be awful important. Yeah. Well, Mr. Mason is awful particular about them, ain't he? Oh, very particular. It ain't like Mr. Mason. Want a cigarette, Joe? No, ma'am. You never know what Mr. Mason is going to do next, do you? How true. Hey, sure got a whole bag full of tricks. Uh, Joe. Oh. Okay, Joe. Come and get it. Okay, Mr. Drake. Excuse me, Miss Street. Yeah, uh, she's all nailed up. Hey, you put it on the loading platform for me. Well, we... You are. shouldn't have. Where's Mr. Mason? 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 Oh, oh he had to leave. Yeah? Uh, yeah, Mr. Mason was in kind of a hurry. Oh. He can't walk out of the building now. Oh, well, uh, maybe you'll think of something. There's something funny going on here, Miss Street. Joe, all Mr. Mason wants you to do is to move this crate of books, and that's all. Well, of course I'll do what he wants, but I just... He, uh, left definite instructions. He wants us to deliver them right away. Us? I'm going with you. I'll tell you where when we get in the truck. Maybe we can't get by the cops? With books? They don't care about books. Of course not. Yeah, of course not. And uh, and here's something for Mr. Mason for your trouble. Hey. He wants the box handled gently, Joe, and this side kept up. Now, well, for this kind of dough, I'd carry it in my arms like a baby. Uh-huh. Well, let's get going. Hey, wait. Let me shift the crate to the middle of the plat. Uh, Joe, Joe, uh, let it alone. And, Joe, be careful. That's funny. Come on, let's go. Now, listen. I saw what was in here. Books? Yeah. But them books wasn't made out of lead. Look out, Joe. Don't shove it like Joe. that. Joe. Uh, I forgot to tell you. We uh, put in a little office safe before we nailed it up. Oh. Office safe. That's why it's so heavy. Mm-hmm. What do I say if the cops stop us, Mr. Drake? What can you say, Joe? That's what's worrying me. Well, you saw what was in the case. I saw what was in the books. case. Books. All you can say is that you saw books in it. Yeah, books. Okay, Mr. Drake. I'm willing to take a chance if he is. He? Oh, I mean you. Mm, well, let's get rolling. But don't look so worried, Joe, or the police will stop you. Yes, ma'am. Here, I'll open the door wide. Miss Street, in case there's trouble, Mr. Mason will look out for me. You know he will, Joe. Yeah, but in case. In case. That's a hot one. I should have said in crate. Oh. Okay, Mr. Drake. Let's get a move. Well, what do you think is going to happen? Can Paul Drake and the porter manage to get that packing case, the case filled with books, of course, past the police cordon? Or will Perry Mason's ruse be exposed? And just what is that ruse? It's immediately after the close of our last episode. Prosecutor Apt and Lieutenant Trag have completed their preparations, and Perry Mason's office building is completely sealed off. 
Right now, in the street outside the building, Prosecutor Apt is having a last word with the assembled reporters before going with Lieutenant Tragg to place Mason under arrest. Well, that last word could prove expensive for Mr. Apt, because inside the building on an upper floor, Della Street is watching with anxious eyes as Paul Drake and a porter maneuver a portable platform through Mason's office door to the corridor. On the platform is a large packing case, a very large packing case. And as it rolls into the hall... Careful of the door, Mr. Drake. Yeah. Be careful with that packing case. Uh, careful as we can, Mr. Street. Okay. Well, we got it in the hall. But don't let it stop rolling, Mr. Drake. Oh, boy, it's so heavy, it's hard to get it rolling again. Yeah, see you, Della. I'll go to the freight elevator with you, Paul. No, you better stick in the office. Well, I'll watch the elevator indicator and get back in time if they start up. I don't know why they're not here by now. Watch it, Mr. Drake. Don't let it run into the wall. Right. There must be a couple of hundred pounds of books in this. 195 pounds. Of books? Don't forget the office safe. Huh? You said you had the office safe in here, too, remember? To make up the extra weight. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah, slow down before we get in the elevator, Mr. Drake. Okay. Yeah, don't want it to run into the back wall of the elevator. Oh, be careful. Do be careful. Treating these books just as gentle as we can, Miss Street. Okay. Push it in the elevator, Joe. <clears throat> don't bump it like that. Della. Joe will get the idea there's something in this besides books. Oh, no. Joe wouldn't get any such idea. Not even when you made me go out of the room while you nailed this thing shut. Now, Joe... Not when I came back and found Mr. Mason out of sight. Oh, shut up, Joe. Beat it, Della. Good luck, Paul. Good luck. Yeah. Come on in, Joe. Well, there's hardly room enough. Well, get going, Joe. <clears throat> See you, beautiful. Mr. Drake. Yeah? There's going to be cops in the basement. Maybe... And they're going to want to know what's in this. Tell them. Huh? You saw books, didn't you? Uh-huh. Then as far as you know, that's all there is inside. Yeah. Books and the office safe. Uh-huh. Just tell them what you know. Like that, huh? Sure. Like that. Then we take this crate out and put it on a truck. And deliver it? Sure. Maybe the cops will have something to say about that. They're after a guy, Joe. Not books. You know that. You want to know something, Mr. Drake? What? I'm scared. Well, what are you waiting for, Joe? Start pulling. I'll shove from back here. Mr. Drake. Okay. This thing makes too much noise. It increases the wheels. Then we could have sneaked out. Now, you're a great one to make a joke, Mr. Drake. Start laughing. Hey, where do you guys think you're taking that? Uh-oh. Now you start laughing, Mr. Drake. Okay, okay, stop. Uh, this is a crate of books. Oh, books, huh? Well, 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 Mr. Drake. Hi, Martin. Yeah, we got a load of books. Uh-huh. Like Mr. Drake told you. Stand aside, huh, Martin? Now, now, don't be in such a rush, Drake. What's the trouble? Hey, let that alone. The building is roped off, Mr. Drake. Yeah? What are you snipping around the crate for? As if you didn't know. Hey, let this crate alone, Sergeant. Joe! Sergeant Martin doesn't care about these books. He's after... Uh, uh, you got somebody trapped in the building, Martin? Yes, Mr. Drake. I think maybe we got them all boxed in, a matter of speaking. Yeah? Well, that's fine. Well, good luck. Thanks. So I guess we better get going. Stand aside. Oh, wait. Huh? Look, Sergeant, are you after a guy or a crate of books? Now, let's take a look. It's books. Joe saw them. That's right. Books from whose office? Uh, from, uh... From upstairs. Come on, come on. From whose office? Wait, uh, uh, the, uh that accounting... No, the... Joe. Now, that's right, Joe. Be a good boy and don't tell stories to the nice policeman. Whose office? Mr... Mr. Perry Mason. Well, well, well. Now, imagine that. Yeah, imagine it. Now, stand aside, huh? School is out, children. Look, stop acting like your idea of a humorous cop. All right, Mr. Drake, we're through laughing. Open it up. 
That is, if you want to keep your license as a private detective. I can't open it. The lid is nailed down. I can see that. Take it off. Me? Yes, you. You've got a hammer sticking out of your overalls there. Uh, Mr. Drake. Don't do it, Joe. He can't make it. Okay. Give me the hammer and I'll take it off. No, you don't open it either. Not without that piece of paper. We got that piece of paper, wise guy. Well, let's see it. Mr. Epps got the warrant. Yeah, you say. He's got it, and I've got the right to open it. Not until I see that piece of paper. Now, look, Drake. Stalling won't buy you a thing. I know he's in there. Do you know it enough to break open a lawyer's private property when his agent tells you no? Huh? I'm responsible for these books. You got a warrant, wise guy. Now, stand aside, or... These aren't on Mr. Mason's premises. So what? It came from there. That cuts no ice. You a lawyer, Martin? I'm not either. Mr. Mason told me his rights, and you touch this before I see a warrant, and he'll throw some of those law books at you. Okay, smart guy. You want to keep him shut up in that crate much longer. Hey, Pete, Carl. Come here and watch these clowns a minute. Just rest comfortable, Mr. Mason. Mason's office is right up here, Mr. Rapp. Yeah. Too bad we couldn't bring the reporters with us. Well, uh, he's complicating it. No, of course you're right. However, They'll get pictures when we bring them down. Yeah. You have your handcuffs? Handcuffs? Sure, sure. Now, look, there's no excuse for putting bracelets on Mason. Oh, uh, but there certainly is, Lieutenant. Uh, mustn't take chances with a tricky operator like him. Now, it's too bad we can't shoot on sight. Oh, we want him alive, Lieutenant Jack. Oh, yes, indeed. I anticipate prosecuting, Mr. Perry Mason. I bet. Well, this is his office. When the lights are on, go on in. I'll make a wager he's not here. Well, just take it easy. Yeah, yeah. Probably hiding in the building. We'll have to hunt him down like a rat. Yes? Stand aside, Miss Street. Oh, uh, hey, stop shoving. What is the meaning of this, Lieutenant Tragg? You know better. Where is he, Dylan? Who? Now, don't stall. You know. But I... Oh, come now, Miss Street. You know the building's sealed off. Well, I knew there was some excitement. Yes. Where's your employer? Now, just a minute. Search the premises, Lieutenant. What? Don't you dare. Go ahead. He isn't here, but you better make sure. Mr. Mason certainly is here. Hey? I said he is here. Now, I've answered your question, and you can get out. All right, relax, Stella. You say he's here. Just, just... Waiting? I said he's here, but not waiting. He's very busy. Oh? And he does not wish to be disturbed. Yes, I can imagine. Under any circumstances, Mr. Apt. <laughs> Ames, I'll be delighted Let's to... go. Stand aside, Miss Street. We, uh, got the authority, Della. A warrant? Mm-hmm. I don't believe it. Yeah. Read it yourself. Go on, go on. Read it. But don't, don't bother with the fine print, Della. It's all in order. Well, all right, Lieutenant Tragg. I'll call Mr. Mason. No, no, you stay here. Come with me, Tragg. Excuse me. Come on, Tragg. Now, uh, wait, wait. Uh, Officer Perry Mason. Uh, well, why, no, I'm sorry. You, you must have the... Uh, no, you've got the wrong number. Hey, give me that. It was the wrong number, Lieutenant Tragg. Uh, yeah. Uh, who is this? Martin. Yeah. Yeah, I heard it, but never mind about her. What? What? Packing case, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, what do you know? You were right, Mr. Rat. Mason didn't sit still. What? Uh, Martin tells me he's intercepted Paul Drake trying to sneak out a packing case through the basement. And that, uh, Perry Mason is inside it. Hmm. Well, it seems you're going to get the last word after all. Well, Mr. Apt seems to be getting just exactly what he wants. Perry Mason, trapped and helpless. All nailed up for delivery. Oh, yes, Mr. Apt is smiling a beaming smile of triumph. 
But, well, by all means, join us on Monday. It's immediately after the close of our last episode when Prosecutor Apt and Lieutenant Tragg went to Perry Mason's office to put the lawyer under immediate arrest. When just as Prosecutor Apt was showing Mr. Mason's secretary the warrant, we heard... You see? It's in order, Miss Street. Yes, I see. And you say Mason's here? Well, um... Uh, yes, uh, uh, Mr. Apt, he's, he's, he's in the law library. I don't believe just... you. I think he's probably hiding somewhere in the building. Uh, we'll have to hunt him down like a rat. But you may as well, Lieutenant Tragg. Okay. Excuse me. Officer Perry Mason. Oh, no, there's no one here like that. Uh, I'm sorry, you must have the wrong number. Right, give me that phone. It's the wrong number, Lieutenant Tragg. Oh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, who says? Oh, from what? Got his straight. What? You what? What is it? Okay, Martin. Good work. Well, I never thought... Martin Scott Mason. Got him? Yeah, Martin intercepted Paul Drake trying to sneak a packing case out through the basement. And Mason was in the packing case? No. Well, well, well. Now, what do you think of that? The packing case. Lieutenant Tragg. A Mr. packing case. A case did come from this office. Indeed it did. But it has books in it. Books, did you say? Oh, tell us. It is books. Mr. Mason Mr. is in Mr. the... Mr. Mason is caught like a rat in a trap. And before you say any more, I have something to tell you, Miss Street. Hmm? You lied to us. Now, take it easy, Ab. She lied to us, Lieutenant. She knew Mason was a wanted criminal, but she tried to help him escape. I've been trying to tell you all the time where he is. Now, let it go, Della. You, Miss Street, are open to charge. I didn't do anything. I'll decide about you later. We'll try. Shall we go to our prisoner? Yes. Uh, 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 I'll get it, Bella. You're both making a terrible mistake. Why, in Mason's office. Drag speaking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. What's the kick? Oh. Now, isn't that too bad? What's the matter, Lieutenant? Uh, sure, man on the main entrance says there's a lobby full of people wanting to go home. Mm, let them go, Lieutenant. After we check in the basement? Didn't your man say he has Mason? Well, yeah, but... Well, Martin does know Mason. He wouldn't be fooled by a phony. No. Okay, Shaw, let him go. We've got Mason. Oh, uh, wait. Huh? Uh, just a minute, Shaw. Hold on. Yeah, Mr. Rath. Uh, everyone may leave except Miss Street. But I tell you, I... I haven't I... decided about you, young woman. Okay, if you insist. Oh, and uh, tell your man to admit the news photographers immediately. Have them escorted to the base. Yeah. News for now, watch them out. Why, yes, Miss Street. I think you. I'll have Mr. Mason put Mason's back into outside. the crate. Yeah. Then so pose Trag and myself on both sides. Right. Yes, that right make away. very effective pictures. Yes, yep. photographers. As for orders of Mr. Rapp. Now, let's go. I think I'll have handcuffs put on Mason and make him get back into the crate. Now, now you you can stand on one side. I'll stand on the other. No, thanks. No? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I'll pose with Mason by myself. Yes, I'm sure the handcuffs will show in the pictures. Uh, the elevator stopped, Mr. Abt. Eh? We're in the basement. Oh, oh, yes, yes, of course. Ah, there they are. Hmm. Photographer's already here, huh? I don't see Mason. Hey, hold it a second, Mr. Rapp. Oh, now, boys, I... You just smile I... a triumph, Mr. Rapp. Hmm? Yeah. No, well, uh, uh, how's this? Perfect. Hey, Martin. Uh, hi, Lieutenant. Where's Mason? Uh, where would he be, Lieutenant? I'm asking. He's in the packing case. What? Sure. This man Drake wouldn't let me open it without I showed him a warrant. So I said, okay. Why, you... 
Why didn't you tell me that over the telephone? I said, okay, bright boy. Let Mason sweat in there for a while. You told me you had, Mason. I have got him, Lieutenant. Oh, it's all right, Track. I hope. Well, the crate came from Mason's office. His man, Drake, was trying to sneak it out. So... He's in there, Lieutenant Drake. All right, open that crate. Make it snappy. Sure, sure, Lieutenant. Uh, just a moment, Martin. Wait for nothing. Open it up. Uh, here, let me. I'll open the crate. Here, give me that crowbar. Add a boy, prosecutor. Yeah. Just stand like that for a second, Mr. Rapp. Uh, like this with the crowbar? That's it. Okay. Oh, uh, now, if uh, if you'll hold my coat, Lieutenant Tag. Yeah. Now, then. You ready, boys? Open it up, Mr. Rapp. Sure. Try Very it well, then. Yeah. I'll have it in just a second. Better be careful. Maybe he's armed. Uh, I'm not worried. Uh, now, uh, uh, perhaps you you better stand beside me, Martin. Uh, sure thing, Mr. Rapp. Yeah. Now, get that thing open. Yeah, all right, all right. Uh... Yeah. There. All right, Mason, stand up. You're covered, so... Mason? Mason! Oh, I... What's the matter? Any in there? It's Brooks. What? Brooks! Mason isn't here. Try again. Martin, get up to that lobby. Lieutenant Shut up and get going. I'll talk to you later. But at this very moment, as Trag is ordering the building closed again... The elevator from Mason's floor descends to the lobby. And as the doors open, Della Street steps out, immediately followed by Perry Mason. Lots of people. Yes. That's why I waited till the word was passed. Oh, Perry. No, 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 Della, don't look back. Don't look at me, whatever you do. Now, you go over and put that envelope in that letter drop before getting in line. Well, are you I'm right behind you. And don't you turn around. Because as long as you don't see me, you can tell Mr. App the truth. I'd like to tell him. This is no time to tell Mr. App. All right. All right, drop it in. Now we go stand in line. All right, now listen closely, Della. We've only got a minute. All right, but... You were certain that Trag ordered the guard to stop you if you tried to leave? I heard it myself. All right, then you know what to do when we reach the door, if it's necessary. But, Terry, the guard at the door is checking everybody. So you had better get ready to go into action. As ready as I'll ever be. Good girl. Now, Della. Yes, Chief. If I get out of the building... If? I'll need the envelope you just mailed. It won't be easy. I'll contact you. How? I don't know how. Not yet, but... Perry, I am scared. Della, please, be scared later, hmm? Now, I'll let you know how to get that stuff to me. I could have mailed it myself, but uh, my movements are going to be uncertain. All right, I'll get it to you. Now, you'll be what? I'll see that it's gotten to you. Okay, okay, come along, keep moving. We're getting close to the door now. He's hardly glancing at the men. Well, that's good for me. But in case there's trouble, I... Uh Uh-oh. What, what? That trouble I was talking about, here it comes. See the indicator on the elevators? Huh? Oh, it's coming up from the basement. Yes, this is going to be close. On, stand here. Okay, keep moving. Keep moving. Harry, the elevator door is opening. Yes, I see. The guard's yeah. looking right at me. Here comes Sergeant Martin. Well, now you know what to do. Hey, where do you think you're going? Who, me? Aren't you Miss Street? Hey, Shaw! Stop what? those people! It's okay, Martin. Take your hands off her. I've got her. I said let go of me. Stop it, Miss Street. Stop those people. Let go. Relax, Martin. I've got her. Lock the front door. Will lock the front me? door. I've me? got her, no. Martin. What's all about? Oh, shut up and lock that door. That's all right. I'll you don't stop you people. Get... Help me stop, Shaw. I've got my hands full with this wildcat. Let her go. Mason's loose. But I thought you said... Are you going to help me? She's fighting me. Stand I'm back, fighting everybody. I want the big idea. Everybody back. Everybody back from the door. Here it is. We mean it now. Back up. Hey, what are you guys doing? Now, just take it easy, everybody. Take it easy. No, you don't, Miss Street. You take her away, Shaw. Come on, Miss Street. Don't you dare touch me again. Make it easy on yourself. Quiet, everybody. Quiet. The more you help, the quicker you can go home. You can't lock us up like now, we were. Now, Mr. You are locked up. You'll stay locked up. There's a wanted criminal loose in this building. 
And nobody leaves until we find them. Well, there was an instant's time in which Perry Mason might have made good his escape. And as we know, Perry Mason is not a man to waste a second when there's need for fast action. But the excitement is far from over, as you'll learn in tomorrow's important and unexpected development. Immediately after the close of our last episode, when Prosecutor Apt discovered he'd been tricked, that Mason might have escaped, in spite of all precautions, the police went into action. Again, the building was sealed off. And right now, Lieutenant Tragg's men are conducting a methodical floor-by-floor search in hope Mason is trapped in the building. But at this same time, many blocks away, a taxi stops at a crowded intersection. And a tall, distinguished gentleman walks quickly, quietly into the corner drugstore, goes to the row of public phone booths, and now, a moment later... This is Jacobson. Yes. Who's it? How are you, Helen? Well, Mr. Mason... No, wait, Helen, wait. You don't know my name. I don't... What? You might think you know who this is speaking, but if I don't tell you, then you don't actually know. Oh. So in case anyone should happen to ask you, you can't say who called you because you don't know. Uh, I've got it. Jake there? No. No, he's on the story. Everybody's on the story. Hmm. I'll bet it's a good one. It's getting better all the time. Yes, well, I can't let it get much better. No? Hey, how'd you get away? Out the door. Jake said they roped off the building. Well, they unroped it long enough for me to... Uh, look, Helen, I'm rather busy right now, if you know what I mean. I can guess. So uh, let's save the explanations for later. Hmm? Sure, sure. What can I... I'm calling about a special delivery letter. Letter? Yes, you'll get it in the morning. That's nice, I guess. Uh, Helen, the material in that envelope is important. I didn't dare leave it in the office with Afton Trag around. Oh. And I didn't dare carry it with me. Seeing as how you might be detained? Hmm. So I took the liberty of mailing it to you. Well, that's okay. Where do I bring it? You don't, you don't, you don't. You give it to Della. Huh? She mails it to me. I give it back? That's it. Yeah, but Della might be held. No, she'll get away after you call her. Why not let me bring the stuff to you? Absolutely no. I'm asking for your help, but only up to a point. Well, but... Now, no argument, Helen. Okay. When do I give it to Della? Well, that is uh, something of a problem. You see, uh, Della is in a little trouble herself. Oh, then they are holding her. Well, she can get away anytime she wants to, but... Huh? She doesn't know that I've escaped... Oh. Oh, so she'll be... She's probably in my office under guard and not causing trouble because she doesn't know which way to jump. Ah. Now, if she knows that you know about that letter, she'll know I told you and that I'm okay. But you will have to be careful. You got that? I've got it, stranger. Huh? I said stranger. Because you are a stranger. I don't know who you are. Now, what is it you want me to get over to her? Let me alone, will you, Sergeant? What are you looking so sour about? What are you looking so sour about? Me? You are Sergeant Martin, aren't you? How do you like that? She tries to cover up how nervous she is by working, then gets mad at me. Well, I suppose you're not nervous. 
Then why are you chewing that cigarette? Huh? Why don't you light it? Oh. Instead of chewing it. Now, listen. And take your hat off in this office. Oh, quit riding All me. right, quit picking at me. All right, all right, all right. I know you're trouble, Miss Street, but you think your boss is still in the building. I do. And he better be. Tell me, Sergeant. Now, listen. Since I've got to stay here and look at you, tell me something. Tell you what? What did the lieutenant say? Huh? Lieutenant Craig, you know. Oh, yeah. I know. What did he say? Uh, Lieutenant's okay. Oh, then he wasn't mad at you. I made a perfectly natural mistake. Oh. When the lieutenant stops seeing red, he'll understand. Oh. Only one thing with Mr. F jumping on the lieutenant. Now, don't answer that. What? Don't touch that phone. Don't you be silly. Look, I'm the law, Miss Street. I was told what to do. I'll answer it. Yeah? Huh? No, there's no Mrs. Jacobson here. Martin. Oh. Oh, this is Mrs. Jacobson. Let me speak to her, Martin. Now, just a minute. Give me the phone. You ought to contact nobody, Miss Street. That's orders. But why? I can't help it. What if it's an important message? That's just it. You're to get no messages. Oh, wait a minute. Now what? I think I'll let you talk to her. But I'll be listening through the switchboard. That's an invasion of privacy. Suit yourself. Either I listen or you don't talk. Oh, all right. Okay, I've got the switchboard phone cut in now. Helen? Hey, what's going on in your office? Everything. And who's that man? That was no man. That was an ape called Sergeant Martin. Who? Lieutenant Tragg's assistant. Say hello to the lady, Sergeant. Hey. Sergeant Martin, meet Mrs. Jacobson. No. Why, he doesn't sound happy. Just ignore him, Helen. Still there? Mm, with the other phone clutched in his hairy little fist. Now, you listen. I'm glad you called, Helen. Oh, troubles? Well, y- you mean you haven't heard? Part of it. You don't sound too happy either. Because I don't know anything. I can't even think I'm so worried. They're searching the building, and if they find Perry... And they will. You be quiet. I'm sorry you feel that way, Della. I can sympathize. I've got troubles, too. What? Well, you know that dress pattern you sent me? Dress pattern? Yeah, the dress pattern you sent me by special delivery. Oh, the dress pattern. Yes, it got there all right? Well, it got here in perfect shape, Della, but it's a size too large. Oh, Helen. You'll have to return it. Oh, really? Uh, a couple of dames carry on. It's a very special pattern. pattern, too. Another thing, I don't understand the directions. What about meeting me in the morning? Uh, morning? Mm-hmm. In morning? In the coffee shop for breakfast, say, 8.30? Yes, I'll be fine. Well, then you can explain and tell me what to do. All right, Helen, it's a day. Now, you, you'll be able to get away. The trouble and all, you, you don't think they'll hold you? I'm sure they won't. You're positive? Positive. In fact, the guy for me to see just walked in the door. I'll see you, Helen. What's the meaning of this, Martin? It's okay, Mr. Rapp. Some dame John about a dress pattern. A what? Dress pattern. Ah. Well, any luck so far? No, but we'll keep looking. It'll take most of the night to search through the whole building, Mr. Ash. Very probably. And I think you should know that I don't intend to stay here that long. Oh, you don't. Would you prefer a nice, comfortable jail cell? I thought you might take that line. Well, and you aren't surprised. And not worried, either. You can't hold me. No, can't I? Look, I haven't worked for a lawyer all these years for nothing, Mr. Abbott. Then you should know the penalty for helping a wanted criminal evade arrest. It was your idea that Mr. Mason was trying to escape from that packing case. I told you that there were books in it, but oh, no, you were too smart to listen. You saw Mason after he sent us running. I did not. I didn't see him, and I don't know where he is. So now I'm going to put on my coat... And my hat, and lock my desk, and go home. Now, not so fast, young woman. And on the way, I shall stop and buy a paper. I hope they've come out with some nice pictures of you carrying that case of books. Uh, Mr. Ant. Fearless prosecutor bravely catches books single-handed. All right, all right, Miss Street. For that, I can hold you 24 hours for questioning, and by uh, heaven... Mr. Ant, I... Mr. Ant. Well, uh, let her go. What? Let her go. Go on. Go on, Miss Street, you go. You go home, and I'll call down and tell them to let you go. Why, Sergeant Martin, I had no idea you were so sweet. Huh. Now explain yourself. Listen, Mr. App, that phone call was strictly phony. What? Now, before that dame called, Miss Street was biting her nails. But after the call, she was full of fight. 
Uh, yeah, she she did seem to... I don't know how they worked it, but that dame told Miss Street something. Yeah. And they made a date to have a meeting in the morning. Oh. Uh-huh. So what say we cover it a night and then cover that meeting, huh? How does that sound to you, Mr. Apt? I say it sounds excellent. Alert the men downstairs, Sergeant. And right away. Well, it seems that Sergeant Martin was listening a bit more closely than Della realized. In fact, if Martin should be there when Helen passes that all-important letter to Della in the morning, why... But won't you be there with us? It's 8.20 in the morning, and during the past 12 hours, the police, urged on by Prosecutor Frederick Apt, have been making a grim, intensive search for May Grant and for May Grant's lawyer. But right now, as Mason's secretary leaves her apartment building and strides briskly towards the coffee shop, seems cheerful and unworried, as if she doesn't know she's under close police surveillance. Or if she does know, as if she doesn't care. And when Della reaches the coffee shop... Behind the phone booth. Ha! Ah. Sit down. What do you mean, ha? I mean, ha, you couldn't see me behind the phone booth. Take more than a phone booth to hide me. <laughs> How are you feeling, Helen? Just wonderful. I must say you're looking wonderful. Thanks. What about the dark circles under your eyes, Miss Street? You lose sleep? Well. Huh? Helen, uh, anybody follow me in here? I don't want to turn around and look. Oh. Uh-uh, Della. Guess they must be waiting outside. Oh. So you've been followed, huh? Mm-hmm. Helen, did you... I know what you're asking, Della. The answer is... Yes. Oh. I talked to him again. And? Well, honey, I hate to disillusion you. I mean, after your sleepless night and all. What do you mean? Is something... Happened? My impression is that Mr. Terry Mason is having a perfectly wonderful time. What? I mean it. He's having the time of his life. Why, that big... I had visions of him sneaking through alleys and sleeping on park benches and starving to death. <laughs> Is he really all right? Apparently. And he told me... Oh, hi, Faye. Helen? Oh, I've, I've already eaten, though. I had breakfast. Oh, go you? on, have something else. You're eating wheat for two, you know, to coin a phrase. <laughs> well, I, I could manage some toast and coffee and... Oh, little scrambled eggs and bacon. Uh Uh-huh. You'll have toast and coffee and scrambled eggs and bacon. Uh, And, Miss Street... Get some toast and coffee for me, please, Faye. Mm, That's no breakfast, Miss Street. That's all I want, really. Well, I know how you feel. Miss Street, gee, I'm I'm sorry about your boss. You see what Mr. Apt said? No, not yet. Well, your friend's got a morning blade. Here, I'll show you. Oh, wait, Faye. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, wait. Wait till after she eats, huh? Oh, sure, after she gets a little strength, huh? Coming right up. Let me see that paper, Helen. If Ab said anything so terrible, I want... easy, honey. App didn't say anything except that both Mrs. Grant and her lawyer will be found and hauled before the bar of justice. You know, it's usual line. Well, then why don't you want up those notes and papers folded in the newspaper? Sorry, Ab. When you leave, you can pick up the paper and carry it out. Good. Say, you're pretty cute, aren't you? (laughs) Now you can tell me what Perry said. Well, he's going to tell you himself in a minute. What? Why didn't you tell me? That's why I picked this seat next to the telephone booth so I could hear the phone ring. Oh, Helen. I was supposed to take the call if you didn't get here, but... Oh, now, why the contact, Della? You can't see how you look over the phone. Anyhow, you look okay. Thanks. I was just taking a quick look around the room. Oh, phone's ringing. I'll get it, Faye. You said you'd call Miss No, I'll answer it for you, though. 
Hello, coffee shop. Is this you, Sally Lou? What? Sally? Is this you, Sally Lou? Perry Mason. Why, sure, this is John. Really, Perry? That's right, John. How are you, honey? Perry, what in I the world? I got wor- me some good news, honey. Oh? Yeah, I got me away to Atlanta. How? Well, I'm driving down with Mr. Norris. Who? Mr. Norris. He's driving down to Atlanta, and I'm going with him. Well, honey, I just think that's fine. Mr. Norris is taking me for less than the bus fare, Sally. Isn't that grand? Why, it's just wonderful. Now, will you stop talking like a poor man's little ab? No longer... Mr. Mr. Norris is right here with me, Sally. What? Mr. Norris is right here. Oh, oh, oh yes. He, he can hear you. Uh-huh. And he thinks you're a southerner? Uh-huh. More than I think. What did he do, advertise for a passenger and you went... That's right, Sally Lou. And you want those papers? Oh, you ain't just whistling Dixie, you. Well, honey, you all tell me where to meet you. Uh-uh. Now, Perry... You just send a little old messenger. You send it to Mr. John Smith. Perry, please. John Smith, and I'll be here in the lobby of a little old hotel down here on Market Street called the Regal... Will you let me bring them? Uh-uh. Don't y'all try to leave where you are with those papers, Sally Lou. You know, the boss watches you too close. I can sneak away. No, you, you, you watch too close, Sally Lou. But I want to go with you, Perry. You've got to work, honey. Listen, I've got a bag packed and checked and right in the terminal. Oh, I'd love to have you, Sally Lou, but your boss, uh, he won't let you off. My boss is a... Nice man. I think he's a nice man. Come on, Perry. Oh, he's a sweet little old man. But he don't want you going off on no trip. Well, you're going to have all the fun. Yes. And I'll be worried sick. Oh, but I'll be true, Sally. Oh, come on. You know what I mean. No. Got any last-minute instructions? No, no, no. Just don't worry about your little old John down there in Atlanta. Oh, yes, there's one thing. Uh, you remember Aunt Em? Aunt Em? Oh, May, May Graham? Uh-huh. Well, she's just fine now. She's got her nice little old place out in the country. Oh, she's safe, Perry. Uh-huh. Now, you you get that stuff off to me by messenger, boy. All right. And think about your... All right. And think about your... All right. And think about... You send that stuff right away now, and uh, I'll tell you goodbye now. Oh, Perry. All right, goodbye. Good luck. Good luck. What? What's the matter, Della? You look nothing. Nothing. No, everything oh, looks wonderful. Oh. Well, told him goodbye, huh? Well, I guess he wants this stuff sent by messenger. I won't even get to see him. I told you he was having a good time. You want my hanky? I'm not going to cry. And if I do, it's only because I'm so mad. Mm-hmm. Helen, I've got a bag all packed and ready to go. But he says no. I know him. It's all right for him to take a chance, but when I want to help him... Well, he's right, though. I know he's right. You don't have to tell me. Well, it looks like somebody better. He's a fugitive. If you slipped away from the cops watching you, then you'd be a fugitive. I know. I know. But it is a shame. You could be of help to him. I could just sneak away without... They're watching me so close, they are. Here you are, girl. Oh, thanks. I brought some extra jam for you, Miss Street. Thanks a lot, Faye, but I really can't eat a thing. Aw, oh, Miss Street. Never mind, Faye. I'll eat it for her. Did you get upset or something? Something. You really can't eat? No, really. Well, I guess I know how you feel, worried about Mr. Mason and all. Hmm. Poor guy. Such a nice guy. Oh, you know him, Faye? Yeah, my kid brother started hanging around with a tough crowd and got into a scrape. Mr. Mason helped straighten him out. Oh, so in my book, he's a nice guy, no matter what Mr. Apt says. Me too. Uh, I'll give you girls your check now, if you don't mind. i got to leave. Oh, you're going off duty already? Uh-uh. I've got, I've got to take a tray over next door. Old lady likes a breakfast brought to her. Uh, what was that say? I'll leave your check now. I've got to take a tray next door to an apartment. Here's your check. Uh, wait, wait a second. Just a second. Well, did I end up with... Uh, that apartment building, has it got a, a rear entrance? Sure. It's hard to say which is the front entrance. In other words, you could walk into one entrance and walk right through the building and then walk out on the other side. Sure. You just go down the hall. And what catch about? a taxi on the other street? Sure, but... Della. Oh, Della. Say, what did I miss, Miss Street? Say, I'm going to ask you a favor. You are? Uh, of course, I'll pay you. 
for what? Say, you, you, you have an extra white uniform, haven't sure. you? Sure. Right here. Well, in the dressing room. Bella, go ahead. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, what do you care about my uniform? Say, I could just hug you. Do you know what she's talking about, miss? Yes, Faye, I'm scared to death I do. Go ahead, Bella. I'll go out and get your taxi. It's quite apparent that Miss Della Street doesn't intend to let Mr. Perry Mason, or Mr. John Smith, if you prefer, monopolize all the fun. In fact, if Della's little scheme works out, Mr. Smith is going to get those papers via a messenger dressed in a waitress's uniform. That is, if her little scheme doesn't fall on its face. We'll learn more about that tomorrow, so be sure to join us, won't you? It's 8.20 in the morning, and during the past 12 hours, the police, urged on by Prosecutor Frederick Apt, have been making a grim, intensive search for May Grant and for May Grant's lawyer. But right now, as Mason's secretary leaves her apartment building and strides briskly towards the coffee shop, seems cheerful and unworried, as if she doesn't know she's under close police surveillance. Or if she does know, as if she doesn't care. And when Della reaches the coffee shop... Behind the phone booth. Ha. Ah. Sit down. What do you mean, ha? I mean, ha, you couldn't see me behind the phone booth. Take more than a phone booth to hide me. <laughs> How are you feeling, Helen? Just wonderful. I must say you're looking wonderful. Thanks. What about the dark circles under your eyes, Miss Street? Do you lose sleep? Well. Huh? Helen, uh, anybody follow me in here? I don't want to turn around and look. Oh. Uh-uh, Della. Guess they must be waiting outside. Oh. So you've been followed, huh? Mm-hmm. Helen, did you... I know what you're asking, Della. The answer is... Yes. Oh. I talked to him again. And? Well, honey, I hate to disillusion you. I mean, after your sleepless night and all. What do you mean? Is something... Happened? My impression is that Mr. Terry Mason is having a perfectly wonderful time. What? I mean it. He's having the time of his life. Why, that big... I had visions of him sneaking through alleys and sleeping on park benches and starving to death. <laughs> Is he really all right? Apparently. And he told me... Oh, hi, Faye. Helen? Oh, I've, I've already eaten, though. I had breakfast. Oh, go you? on, have something else. You're eating wheat for two, you know, it's going to phrase. <laughs> well, I, I could manage some toast and coffee and... Oh, little scrambled eggs and bacon. Uh huh. You'll have toast and coffee and scrambled eggs and bacon. Uh, and Miss Street. Just some toast and coffee for me, please, Faye. Mm, that's no breakfast, Miss Street. That's all I want, really. Well, I know how you feel, Miss Street. Gee, I'm I'm sorry about your boss. You see what Mr. Apt said? No, not yet. Well, your friend's got a morning blade. Here, I'll show you. Oh, uh, wait, Faye. Uh huh. Uh, wait, wait till after she eats, huh? Oh, sure, after she gets a little strength, huh? Coming right up. Let me see that paper, Helen. If Ab said anything so terrible, Take I want it to... easy, honey. App didn't say anything except that both Mrs. Grant and her lawyer will be found and hauled before the bar of justice. You know, like usual lines. Well, then why don't you want up those notes and papers folded in the newspaper? Sorry, Ab. When you leave, you can pick up the paper and carry it out. Good. Say, hey, you're pretty cute, aren't you? <laughs> now you can tell me what Perry said. Well, he's going to tell you himself in a minute. What? Oh, why didn't you tell me? 
That's why I picked this seat next to the telephone booth, so I could hear the phone ring. Oh, Helen. I was supposed to take the call if you didn't get here, but... Oh, now, why the compact, Della? He can't see how you look over the phone. Anyhow, you look okay. Thanks. I was just taking a quick look around the room. Oh, phone's ringing. I'll get it, Faye. No, I'll answer it for you, though. Hello, coffee shop. Is this you, Sally Lou? What? Sally? Is this you, Sally Lou? Perry Mason. Why, sure. This is John. Really, Perry? That's right, John. How are you, honey? Perry, what in I the world? I got wor- me some good news, honey. Oh? Yeah, I got me away to Atlanta. How? Well, I'm driving down with Mr. Norris. Who? Mr. Norris. He's driving down to Atlanta, and I'm going with him. Well, honey, I just think that's fine. Mr. Norris is taking me for less than the bus fare, Sally. Isn't that grand? Why, it's just wonderful. Now, will you stop talking like a poor man's little ab? No longer... Mr. Mr. Norris is right here with me, Sally. What? Mr. Norris is right here. Oh, oh, oh yes. He, he can hear you. Uh-huh. And he thinks you're a southerner? Uh-huh. More than I think. What did he do, advertise for a passenger and you went... That's right, Sally Lou. And you want those papers? Oh, you ain't just whistling Dixie, sure. Well, honey, you all tell me where to meet you. Uh-uh. Now, Perry... You just send a little old messenger. You send it to Mr. John Smith. Perry, please. John Smith, and I'll be here in the lobby of a little old hotel down here on Market Street called the Regal... Will you let me bring them? Uh-uh. Don't y'all try to leave where you are with those papers, Sally Lou. You know, the boss watches you too close. I can sneak away. No, you, you, you watch too close, Sally Lou. But I want to go with you, Perry. You've got to work, honey. Listen, I've got a bag packed and checked and right in the terminal. Oh, I'd love to have you, Sally Lou, but your boss, uh, he won't let you off. My boss is a... Nice man. I think he's a nice man. Come on, Perry. Oh, he's a sweet little old man. But he don't want you going off on no trip. Well, you're going to have all the fun. Yes. And I'll be worried sick. Oh, but I'll be true, Sally. Oh, come on. You know what I mean. No. Got any last-minute instructions? No, no, no. Just don't worry about your little old John down there in Atlanta. Oh, yes, there's one thing. Uh, you remember Aunt Em? Aunt Em? Oh, May. May Grant? Uh-huh. Well, she's just fine now. She's got her nice little old place out in the country. Oh, she's safe, Perry. Uh-huh. Now, you you get that stuff off to me by messenger, boy. All right. And think about your... All right. And think about your... All right. And think about... You send that stuff right away now, and uh, I'll tell you goodbye now. Oh, Perry. All right, goodbye. And good luck. Good luck. What? What's the matter, Della? You look nothing. Nothing. No, everything oh, looks wonderful. Oh. Well, told him goodbye, huh? Well, I guess he wants this stuff sent by messenger. I won't even get to see him. I told you he was having a good time. You want my hanky? I'm not going to cry. And if I do, it's only because I'm so mad. Mm-hmm. Helen, I've got a bag all packed and ready to go. But he says no. I know him. It's all right for him to take a chance, but when I want to help him... Well, he's right, Della. I know he's right. You don't have to tell me. Well, it looks like somebody better. He's a fugitive. If you slipped away from the cops watching you, then you'd be a fugitive. I know. I know. But it is a shame. You could be of help to him. I could just sneak away without... They're watching me so closely. They are. Here you are, girl. Oh, thanks. I brought some extra jam for you, Miss Street. Thanks a lot, Faye, but I really can't eat a thing. Oh, Miss Street. Never mind, Faye. I'll eat it for her. Did you get upset or something? Something. You really can't eat? No, really. Well, I guess I know how you feel, worried about Mr. Mason and all. Hmm. Poor guy. Such a nice guy. Oh, you know him, Faye? Yeah, my kid brother started hanging around with a tough crowd and got into a scrape. Mr. Mason helped straighten him out. Oh, so in my book, he's a nice guy, no matter what Mr. Apt says. Me too. Uh, I'll give you girls your check now, if you don't mind. i got to leave. Oh, you're going off duty already? Uh-uh. I've got, I've got to take a tray over next door. Old lady likes a breakfast brought to her. Uh, what was that say? I'll leave your check now. I've got to take a tray next door to an apartment. 
Here, just uh, wait, wait a second. Just a second. Well, did I end up there? Uh, that apartment building, has it got a, a rear entrance? Sure. It's hard to say which is the front entrance. In other words, you could walk into one entrance and walk right through the building and then walk out on the other side. Sure. You just go down the hall. And what catch about? a taxi on the other street? Sure, but... Della. Oh, Della. Say, what did I miss, Miss Street? Say, I'm going to ask you a favor. You are? Uh, of course, I'll pay you. For what? Say, you, you, you have an extra white uniform, haven't sure. you? Sure. Right here. Well, in the dressing room. Bella, go ahead. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, what do you care about my uniform? Say, I could just hug you. Do you know what she's talking about, miss? Yes, Faye, I'm scared to death I do. Go ahead, Della. I'll go out and get your taxi. It's quite apparent that Miss Della Street doesn't intend to let Mr. Perry Mason, or Mr. John Smith, if you prefer, monopolize all the fun. In fact, if Della's little scheme works out, Mr. Smith is going to get those papers via a messenger dressed in a waitress's uniform. That is, if her little scheme doesn't fall on its face. We'll learn more about that tomorrow, so be sure to join us, won't you? It's not yet nine o'clock in the morning. As across the street from the coffee shop where Della met Helen Jacobson a few moments ago, Police Sergeant Martin nods to another man standing quietly on the street corner, then steps into a cigar store. And a moment later... Lieutenant Craig. Now, this is Martin. Now, Lieutenant? Martin. Yeah, yeah, I got her sewed up tighter than a drum. Sure, I'm sure. I'm calling from across the street. Yes, sir, she's inside and we followed orders to a T, Lieutenant. And we're taking no chances on her spotting us. No, sir, no, sir, no sign of a contact yet. Except that Jacobson woman left a few minutes ago. Uh, Miss Street is still inside, and... Oh, Lieutenant Tragg, that's no good. I don't care what Mr. Apt says. Picking her up won't do anything. Now, wait till she tries to meet Mason, and when she does, then lower the boom. But, Lieutenant Tragg... Well, just give me an hour. Okay, Lieutenant, but I still... Yes, sir, I know you think Mason won't show if he hasn't shown by now, but just the same, I think. Okay, okay, well, you don't have to yell. Okay, okay, well, you don't have to yell. It'll take me a little while to get set up, Lieutenant, sir. Just the same, Lieutenant, sir. Nothing's going to happen. We've got our soda tight. No, no. Better do what I think he says. And if he's wrong, it's his name. Well, it's true enough. Martin has got the coffee shop well covered. But Martin can't see inside, where Della is following the waitress Faye towards the employee's dressing room. This is it, Miss Street. Better duck in quick before the boss sees us. Now, where's that extra white uniform? Please? Hey, I was telling you to hurry. Please, I don't know how much time I've got. The uniform's in my locker. Uh, let me set down this tray. All right, I'll just slip off my dress while you're getting it. Put it on the bench by the tray. It just came back from the laundry. Oh, gosh, maybe it won't fit. Oh, we're about the same size. About? But this uniform is tailored kind of... Okay, give it to me. Stick your arms to it. Starchy. It seems all right. You haven't buttoned it yet. Button it if I have to... Oh, I pinched myself. Now, listen, will you tell me one more time, Faye, while I pack myself into this thing? The tray goes next door, is that uh, right? Yeah, the, the next entrance. You can't miss it. Mm -hmm. It's breakfast for the old lady in 1B. On the ground floor? Yeah. 
After you leave the tray for her, you can keep walking right down the hall and come out on the other street. Where Helen will be waiting with the taxi. Your friend? Don't ask questions, will you, Faye? Gee, this is tight. You mean the uniform? Yeah, well... Better be careful how you sit down. There. How does it look? Well, not that good. I'll just roll up my own dress. You want to stick this in your locker? Uh, where do I say? Just keep it. And my purse, too. I'll get a couple of things out of it. And... Uh, there's a pocket in the front there, but don't try to put too much in it. you is this enough for the uniform? Oh, too much. I'll give you two. Oh, keep it, Faye. If this works, it's worth it. And if it doesn't... And if it doesn't, it won't make any difference? I keep telling you, Faye, please don't ask any questions. What you don't know won't hurt you. I read the papers. I don't have to ask questions. What? Lawyer disappears. Cops want lawyer. Cops watch lawyer's secretary, waiting for them to... for her to lead them to the lawyer. Faye... Secretary goes in restaurant, puts on white uniform, walks out right past the cops carrying a tray of breakfast... Cops look at uniform and ignore secretary. Well, I figured something else, too. I'm going with you. Hey. Just in case something happens, I can maybe stall them long enough to give you a running start. <laughs> if you run in that uniform, you'll be able to run right out of it. But I can't let you oh, get... Miss Street, honest. Mr. Mason did my kid brother one big favor and wouldn't take a cent. Not even the little I could offer him. Let me help you help him, huh? But, honey, you're no crook, so what if, What can they do to me? Come on, let's go. Well, wait a minute. Let me put this newspaper on the tray. The lady didn't order a newspaper. It isn't for the lady. All right. I'll go ahead and see where the boss is. It's okay. Nick's adding up a check at the counter. Just keep walking. I'll pick up another tray. Well, hurry. I'll catch the door. This is the tough part. Let me just walk ahead. See anything? Guy standing at the curb. Stop that, Faye. That wasn't me. What? That was the guy whistling at you. Where? Oh, that's a police officer. I recognize him. Is he? It's okay. He wasn't looking at your face. <gasps> okay, this is it. Just walk into the door. Woo! Oh, Miss Street. I say, you're as white as that uniform. I'm not used to this. But I'll be okay. And you better get going. Just keep on down the hall to the street. If your friend's got a cab waiting, it'll be right outside. I don't know how to thank you. Don't cry. Good luck. Thanks. Of course, this uniform weren't so tight I could run. No, I think I'll run anyway. Silly paging Mr. John Smith in a waitress's uniform. Della. <gasps> you scared me. Oh, Harry. Horn rimmed spectacles. <laughs> no, no. Oh, what is that you've got on underneath that coat? <laughs> it's a waitress's uniform. Oh, Harry, you, you look so different. Maybe. But I'm the same guy who told you to send a messenger with a. You got what you were supposed to send? Yes, right here in the newspaper. All right, give it to me fast. Why the get-up? Then why didn't you send a messenger? This is my disguise. I used it to get away from the police following me. I had to bring these things to you, Perry. You remember I said to send a messenger? Yes, yes, but I got clean away. Mm -hmm. And I thought there might be some last-minute instructions. Mm -hmm. and, and I couldn't let you go without saying goodbye. Mm -hmm. Miss Street, you uh, didn't by any chance have some thought in the back of your head of talking your way into going along, did you now, Miss Street? Well, I never... Can't I go, Perry? No. I could help you. You could. And if it weren't for the risk... Oh, risk. They're looking high and low for me, Della. I may never get out of town at all. And if I'm picked I'll up... I'll take that risk. No. Now, give me those papers. Wait a minute, Perry. No, nothing doing. Mr. Norris is on his way down to the lobby. Who's Mr. Norris? The salesman. He travels back and forth to Atlanta. Now, listen. I don't want to have to explain you to that him. That be easy. Look. Wedding ring. Yes, dear. Oh, cut it out, will you, Della? Now, get moving before... Well, 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 well Mr. Smith, I, uh... Well... Oh, uh, Mr. Norris, I, uh, uh... Yes, Mr. Smith? Well, go uh, on, John. Introduce me to the man. Uh, this, uh, this is Sally Lou, my wife. Oh, your wife. 
Well, that's always the way. The pretty ones are already clean. <laughs> Why, Mr. Norris. Why, I thought you couldn't get away, Mrs. Smith. Hmm? Well, your husband told me you couldn't leave your job, even to say goodbye. Why, he did? But here you are. Mm -hmm. Here's little old me, and I've got some wonderful news, Mr. Norris, some scrumptious news. Guess what? What? I can go with him. What? I was just going to tell him my boss let oh, me now, off. Now, now, Sally Lou, you know your boss won't let you go for a whole week. Oh, yes, he will, honey. My boss is just the nicest man. I told him my husband had to go back home to Atlanta on business, and he said, he said, now you just go on along, Miss Smith. Isn't that fine? Yes, that's just wonderful. Isn't it, though? But, well, we can't work it out, honey. There's not enough room, not enough money. Oh, plenty of room, Smith. Plenty of room. Oh, but Mr. Norris, you Now, I'll I... tell you what. Since the little lady went to the trouble of getting off a job... The little lady's going to lose her job. Oh, no, John. My boss is the nicest thing. Well, I'm going to be nice, too, Mrs. Smith. Are you? You come on along, and I, I won't charge you a cent. Why, Mr. Norris. How's that, Smith? Two for the price of one. Well, you're very kind. Oh, sir, it's but just wonderful. I... Isn't he the nicest man, John? No, he's just John, lovely. I could kiss you right here. I'm so happy. Yes, ma'am. Aren't you happy, John? Oh, yes. Uh, yes. You all ready to leave, Miss Smith? Well, I just have to stop by and pick up my bag in the front. Well, then I guess that's everything. <laughs> <laughs> Atlanta, here we come. Well, right now, Della is smiling in secret delight as she starts on the trip with Mason and Mr. Norris. But Della doesn't know that she's also starting on a strange and exciting and dangerous adventure that long before they reach Atlanta... Oh, by all means, join us tomorrow. Well, although Perry Mason is not wanted for murder, he is wanted for helping his client escape from jail. May Grant is wanted for that crime. And so the search for the missing Mason and the missing May, and now for Mason's missing secretary, is an intensive search, spurred on by pressure from prosecutor Frederick Apt. Yes, Mr. Apt would give a very great deal if he could know that at this very moment, Perry Mason and Della, as John and Sally Smith, are riding peacefully in an automobile of one Mr. Norris, a salesman on his way to Atlanta. In fact, right now, as they come out of New York's famed Lincoln Tunnel, Mr. Norris switches on his car radio and... Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. I'd like to pick up a news broadcast. Would well, you want me to tune it for you? Oh, no, that's okay, Miss Smith. I, I can do it. Uh... Mysterious disappearance of the defendant uh, hmm? and her lawyer, Perry Mason. Prosecutor Apt is quoted today as saying it is only a matter of time. Uh, fellow Apt is really on the ball. Uh, Mr. Apt says that all enforcement officers have been alerted that he expects the apprehension of Mason and his client in a matter of hours. Mm, yeah, that's really uh, there is some reason to believe that Mason is trying to reach the Middle West or further, perhaps Denver, Colorado. Mm. Really, sir? But the police believe that mm. Mason is still within the boundaries of this city. Now, your attention is called to the descriptions of the wanted persons. Perry Mason is six feet. I've heard those descriptions so often I know them by heart. Now, now Mason is just uh, exactly... Tell me, Miss Norris, do you travel down to Atlanta very often? Hmm? Oh, sure, Miss Smith. Company sends me back and forth by every month. Oh? Mm-hmm. Now, but to get back to that Mason thing... Miss Norris, I... Well, think... Lou, don't interrupt the man. Well, I I've got a theory about it, Smith. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Now, you take Mason. He he's wanted by the police and the prosecutor's office, and they want him real bad. Yeah. Well, they'll skin him alive if they get their hands on him. Yeah, I reckon old Mason better keep out of there. Well, that's exactly what I mean. What I mean. So, now Mason has to get out of the city. Now... The cops are watching the buses and planes and the trains. You can bet on that. Uh -huh. So, why don't Mason get out of town this way? What way? Well, just like we're doing. Now, you look at all this traffic, all the way to the Jersey Turnpike. Now, Mason can get in a car and get on one of these through main highways and just breeze out. Gone with the wind, huh? Oh, that was a book about Atlanta. Huh? Gone with the wind, honey. Oh, oh, <laughs> Well, speaking of books, did you read where Mason pulled a fast one with a crate of books? He went on... What's the matter? 
We're well, getting to the toll gate now. Uh-oh. Hey, look at that. There's police looking in the cars as they pass the toll gate. Say, I'll bet, I'll bet you they're looking for Mason. Oh, no bet. Maybe the cops figured the same way I did. Looking for Mason to try to leave this way. Uh, you need change for the toll fare? Oh, no. no. I'll take care of it, Smith. Part of our bargain. <laughs> what you pay me is gravy anyhow, just a way to cut expenses and get some company. Well, what I mean is, uh, have you got the right change? Hmm? Well, well, no, just a five-dollar bill, but they'll give me change. Oh, well, here, Mr. Norris. It's a half-dollar. Save a little time. Why, thank you, Smith. I'll pay you back. You remind me. Ah, uh, Sally. Yes, John. It's exciting, isn't it? Oh, isn't it, though? More fun. Yes, sir. They're looking in every car. Yeah, I reckon I'd better put on my glasses. Hmm? So I can see them good. Oh, well, what do we care, huh, Sally? Huh? All we care is going on our trip, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Just being together. That's all we care about, huh? Oh, I'm awful glad you could come along, Sally. Mm. I know. Look for a while like you couldn't. Well, we're almost to the gate. Hey. They, hey, they pulled that guy out of line up there. They're, they're really looking. Well, it was a nice trip while it lasted. Yeah, oh, I'll roll my window down. Uh, Come here, Sally Lou. Why, John. Come on. Give me a little kiss. Why, honey, what'll Mr. Norris think? <laughs> oh, no. Don't you mind me. Say, <laughs> I'll bet you folks haven't been married too long. <laughs> no, not too long. Come here, Sally. John, those policemen are looking. Well, you let them look. I guess a man's got the right to kiss his own wife. Uh, here you are. Hey. Oh, they're newlyweds, officer. Oh, honey. <laughs> well, that didn't take so long. No, it didn't. You know something, Mr. Smith? No, what's that? When your wife said she could come along, well, uh, I had an idea maybe you weren't too happy about it. Why, Mr. Norris? Oh, I was wrong. I'll admit it. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think you're glad she's here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Would look kind of funny if I'd launched on to you when we went through. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I said I'd, I'd, I'd been right lonesome. <laughs> well, you're really glad she's here, huh? Oh, I'm mean. Mm. What about you, Miss Smith? Mm -hmm. I just wonder. Yes, Miss Smith? Uh, do we go through any more toll gates, Mr. Norris? Take the wrappings off you. There, now. And pull the cork out of baby. Kitty's gonna pour a great big drink out of baby. Put that down. Anna. Anna, if you don't quit sneaking up on me like that, if I'm you gonna... been adoring that <laughs> bottle, you'd have heard me. You mean my little baby? <laughs> You want one, Anna? No. Okay. Now, neither do you. Oh, no? Now, listen, Anna. I played along with you, but now you let Kitty and her baby alone. Mrs. Grant's run away, and Mason's run away, and there's not going to be any trial. Not today or for lots of days. So, Kitty's going to have fun with baby. I'll say you are. Put that down and listen to me. I haven't got much time. You sound like you're going away someplace, Santa. Yes. John going too? Yes. Well, well. What do you think of that? Leaving Kitty all alone for a while. Uh-huh. In a way, I'll miss you, Anna. But I'll manage to comfort myself. With a bottle, huh? Oh, Anna, you know you can trust me. I've got to. Kitty. I think I know where Mason's gone. Just so he stays gone. Oh, no, Catherine. Haven't you guessed yet why Mason disappeared? He could have stayed and fought for himself. For, uh, Mr. Apt said Mr. Mason was in trouble. And so on. Mason could handle Apt without any trouble. No. Mason is on the trail, Kitty. Anna. He can't be. It's the only reason he's become a fugitive. Well, you've got to stop him, Anna. You've got to now, stop him. Now, that's what I'm going to try and do. But that isn't all, Kitty. There's Mrs. Grant. 
Mason hid her away. And Mason's smart. She won't be found in a hurry. Good. Let her rot wherever she... No, no, again, Kitty. No, no, indeed. Marcel's murder has to be cleared off the books. Oh. Oh, yes. And until she's convicted, there will always be a question if she's really guilty. Maybe after a while, somebody will start looking for the answer to that question. She's got to be pulled out of hiding. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that, but I don't... that's what you're going to do while we're gone. Me? Now, I won't be here to supervise you, Catherine. Anna won't be on hand to make sure you behave yourself. Then I do what? The baby. Hmm? Oh, now, Anna, you know I'll leave the bottle alone if you tell me to. Yes, dearie, you certainly will. But I didn't mean that baby. Dari. Dari? You will start immediate action to have Dari turned over to you. Anna! She's your little girl, isn't she? Yes, but you know how I feel. Your own little girl living with foster parents. But, Anna, I can't stand Your little girl you love like poison, dearie, but still she's yours. Now, you start that action, Kitty. See that it gets in the paper. When she finds out why you're after Dory, she'll come out of hiding. Explain it to Apt. I can't tell Fred how I feel about that brat. No, no, not that, dearie. Oh, my, no. Freddy Apt must think you love your little girl. But Freddy has a mind of his own. He'll see the possibilities and set the trap. Now, you make yourself some coffee. Brush your teeth. And then go see Freddy. Meanwhile, I'm going to put this baby in the garbage can. Well, already Mason's action is bringing results. And for the first time, Anna Hurley is trusting Kitty with an important task. But, by the same token... The pressure on Mason is doubled because Anna's right. A threat to Dory would pull May Grant out of hiding. So by all means, join us on Monday. Find out, Anna. What? I checked. I, I checked every way I knew how. There's no trace. <sighs> Anna, I tried every trick I could think of. You know if anyone could trace Mason, I could. Why, even the police are baffled too, Anna. I, all I need is a, a little time. I, I've never failed you before, Anna. No, not before. I, I, in just a little more time. You fool. Anna. There isn't time. What's the matter with you? But I did the best I could. There simply isn't any lead. Oh, yes, there is. There must be. Particularly for you. You know what he's doing. Yes. Following a lead to the nursing home. But how? And why? Why should he even think of the nursing home? Well, if I knew that, I'd know the answer. But we didn't leave a train. Mason must have found one. Well, yes, maybe. Maybe, certainly. He must have found something. Or he, he wouldn't have put himself so far out of the limb. We've got to stop him, John. Uh, Anna, shall we go out to Minnesota and wait for him? No, you fool. We mustn't let him get near Minnesota. Then we have to find out where he is now. We've got to stop him now. Oh, we will. No. We'll find him and we'll stop him. You know, Mason's hampered. The police are after him. He's on the dodge, Anna. He's got to be careful. Not careful enough. With the police looking. Not hard enough. He's not on a vacation, Anna. He's got trouble. Not troubles enough. Of course. Hmm? I'll... I'll buy him some trouble. Uh, what did you say? While you waste time, I'm going to do something. Waste? I'm doing the best oh, I can. Oh, shut up and hand me the phone. What? The phone! Oh, oh. Yes, my love. Dial apps off. Go on. Uh, yes, my love. 
Anna. What? Just I... shut up. There's someone answering. Uh, hello? I'd like to speak to Mr. Apt, if you please. Oh, yes, yes, I know he's busy, but this is terribly important. Oh, yes, my dear, really important. Hmm? Oh, uh, well, uh, just say, uh, why, yes, say it's a public-spirited citizen. That's right, a public-spirited citizen who, who detests publicity. Yes, uh, I'll wait, dear. Uh, what are you up to, Anna? Trouble for Mr. Mason. What? Go upstairs and get Kitty, John. She's seeing Apt later, and I want to brief her beforehand. Uh, Mr. Apt? Uh, oh, well, well, I can't tell you my name, sir. No, I, I really can't. However, I, I know what I've got to say will interest you, because, well, it, it concerns Perry Mason. Uh, are you listening, sir? Well, up until now, Perry Mason and Della have had very little trouble, as under the names of John and Sally Smith, they've been driven southward by the salesman, Mr. Norris. Oh, Norris had done a lot of talking about the places he's been and the things he's seen and his business triumphs, and Perry and Della have learned that Norris considers himself a very sharp fellow indeed. But for the last hour or so... Mr. Norris has kept returning to the subject of the fugitive lawyer, Perry Mason. And Mason is beginning to notice a speculative gleam in Mr. Norris's rather close-set eyes. Now, as they drive through a little town just south of Baltimore... As I was saying about that Mason thing... What road are we on, Mr. Mm, what's that, Miss Smith? What road are we on? Oh, oh, well, this is a little back road I happen to know. Uh, we stay on this a few more miles and then uh, turn southwest for Atlanta. But now about me, sir. Uh, isn't this kind of roundabout? Uh-huh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll make a confession, Mr. Smith. And what's that? Well, I've got a friend just outside of Washington. I want to stop off and see him. But I thought... He's a very close good friend, a close friend. I always stop and see him. You don't mind. Well, no, I, I don't guess we mind, only we were kind of anxious to get to Atlanta. Well, Mr. Norris, you were going to tell us about this uh, car deal. Car deal? Oh, you interested? Uh-huh. Well, <laughs> I got this car of my cousin Don. Now, old Don's got a big farm outside of Marietta, Georgia. <laughs> got more money than cents. But gamble. Oh, <laughs> man, how he does love to gamble. Cards, pitching horseshoes, shoot dice, any, don't matter to him. He's a dyed in the wool gambler, huh? He was. <laughs> Till I cured him. Oh, uh, just a second, Mr. Better slow down going through this uh, town. Oh, I'm glad you reminded me. Some of these Maryland constables are real tough. Anyhow, about old Don. Now, one of my trips north, I, I had my old car then. Yes, your old car. Uh, well, isn't this a pretty little town, John? Yes, yeah, sure is. Well, now, let me tell you. I got me some trick dice. What? Well, the kind of dice you can roll any number you want. Supposed to use them for tricks. See? Ouch! Huh? <laughs> well, I, I, I caught on before you dug your elbow in my ribs, Mr. Norris. <laughs> well, anyhow, I played a trick on old Don. With crooked dice? Mm, tricked him right out of his car. I'd have got his farm, too, if his wife hadn't busted up the game. <laughs> you, you better slow down a little more. Well, I'm just doing 40, and I'm watching out behind. I hope you can spare a glance ahead occasionally. Oh, now, you just relax, Miss Smith. Yeah, I'm going to turn on the radio. Say, I was very interested in that dice game. No, I'll tell you all about that in a minute. I, I want to get the news. Well, well it's after 6 o'clock. Oh, who cares about the world news? I want to see what's cooking on that lawyer. Oh. And that fellow Mason. Yes, I know who you mean. I still think a good way for Mason to get loose would be to just get in the car and go. Don't you think so, Mr. Smith? Are you you're not on the station? Are no, you? I'm not. Founding election. Ah, that's it. There's been a new development in the search for attorney Perry Mason. Yeah, you hear that? A new news release has just come from the office of Assistant District Attorney Frederick Well, Abt. maybe they've caught Mr. Mr. Mason. Mr. Apt has announced that an anonymous public-spirited citizen has just posted a reward of $1,000. Hey. $1,000 for information leading to the location of Perry Mason. Mr. Apt says he does not know the identity of the public-spirited citizen, 
However, he says that the citizen is a woman. A woman? And Mr. Rapp says the reward is bona fide. He's holding the money in trust to be given to the person or persons deserving. Hey, hey. Now for the sports round. A baseball official. Ah, a thousand bucks. A public spirited citizen. Yeah. It, it didn't say a word about that missing killer, Mrs. Graham. Well, what's that? Mason's client. Maybe they think she committed suicide after all. Yeah, maybe. But somebody sure wants Mason caught. Man, a whole thousand dollars. <laughs> Somebody's going to latch on to that. They'll have to spot Mason first. <laughs> thousand dollars a big help to the eyesight, Mrs. Smith. Yeah, thousand dollars. Ah, that takes some thinking about. Well, hadn't you better slow down? Yeah, we're almost out of town. Man, what I couldn't do with a thousand dollars. Such a pretty little town, isn't yeah. it? So clean and nice. Say, I, I wonder what you'd have to do. What was that? I mean, if you spotted Mason. Just call the police, huh, Mr. Smith? Oh, John, isn't that the prettiest little house? Where is that, one honey? on the bluff with the white shutters right there on the hill. Oh, boy, if I There's had that thousand. There's a little that boy playing out in the yard, you see him? Oh, say, no, oh. sir, you'd better Can watch yourself. Great there. big town. Look out! That child's wagon is rolling! Oh! oh what, what happened? What? You hit a child's wagon. Was there? No, there was no child in it. It rolled down the drive. To the wow, seat. I'd hate to, to be dodging a hit and run. Hey, uh, let me pull it out from under the car and get going. Oh, well, wait. Uh, wait, nothing. This is a tough little town. And we'd get held up. Come on, give me a hand. Are you all right, Bella? Now that I know there wasn't a child in that wagon. All right, then listen a minute. Come on, help me, Smith. Yeah, just a minute, Norris. My wife is a little shaky. Bella, did you notice anything about Norris? I mean, uh, the way he's been looking at you. Yeah, so ever since he heard about that reward. I heard you think he suspects who you are. He suspects that he's even half as sharp as he thinks he is. And I know he's fully as crooked as I think he is. Barry, look, that man. Huh? Oh, from the house. Huh? I seen you. I seen you. All right, now take it easy. You tore up my kid's wagon. I said take oh, it this easy. This is trouble. That, that wagon rolled right out in front. I caught you red-handed. I'm going to call the law. The law? That's bad trouble. Can he call the police? You fellas come whipping through town no, like 60. Anybody you can call the police. Can you just let me explain? Now I've got guy. eyes. You can't talk yourself out of this. No, there's no help for him. I've got to get us out of it. Here goes. Well, Perry Mason ran into trouble much sooner than Anna B. Hurley expected. Trouble Hurley expected. Trouble Hurley expected. Trouble due to the reward Anna posted. Because Norris was thinking about that reward so hard he didn't see the wagon. And as we'll learn, Perry Mason's troubles have only started. But more of that tomorrow. A few hours ago, when Anna B. Hurley, posing as an anonymous public-spirited citizen, posted a $1,000 reward for information as to the whereabouts of attorney Perry Mason, Anna hoped for quick results. But the results are coming a lot faster than even Anna hoped for. For right now, in a roadside restaurant about 10 miles south of the city of Baltimore... Bella Street has been sitting tense, concentrating on what Perry Mason has been telling her. You understand now, Bella? Yes. I'll check as soon as Norris steps out of that phone booth. He's watching us, Chief. All right, let him. Don't look at him. Now, let me see your lipstick. Lipstick? Yes, and lean forward so that he can't see you. Mm -hmm. Hand it to me on this side. Ah, good. It's got a great big long metal case. Yes, of course, but, but why? Maybe no reason. I'll know when Norris steps out of that phone booth. All right, here he comes. Uh, you folks ordered yet? No, not yet. You will speak to your wife? Uh-huh. Everything's fine in Georgia. That's good. And everything will be fine in Maryland as soon as we finish our business. Mm -hmm. You ready to hand over that thousand dollars, Mr. Mason? You don't care if I quit calling you Mr. Smith, do you? Uh, just as long as you don't say it too loud. Well, we'll finish our business in a minute. First, now where are you going? I want to check up on a plane schedule since we've reached the parting of the ways. Oh, plane schedule, huh? Just sit here and talk to Bella. Wouldn't be thinking of trying to run out on me, would you? You'd see me if I did. Remember, all I've got to do is notify the cops to get the reward. If you try, would. 
If you try. <laughs> you know, I don't care where I get that thousand bucks. I don't care where I get that thousand bucks. I don't care where I get that thousand bucks. I don't care where I get that thousand bucks. I don't care where I get that thousand bucks. Just relax, Norris. I'm only going to form. I'm only going to form. I'm only going to form. Uh, long distance? Yeah, I just put in a call to Baltimore. I to Baltimore. Are you the same young lady? I just put in a call to the police department of Baltimore. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, connect me up again, huh? And hurry, please, ma'am. Uh, let me speak to the same policeman. Uh-huh. That's right. My name is Norris. I'm calling from uh, Robbie Lee's restaurant. Yeah. Well, thank you. Oh, yes, ma'am, yes. Uh, uh, hello? Uh, this here's Norris. Y y you the man I just spoke to? Yeah, uh, about that Perry Mason thing? What if I do sound different? I'm excited. Wouldn't you be? Uh. Well, now look, Sergeant, there's been a change. Now, now, just a minute, just a minute. I couldn't help it. Mason changed his mind, here. Yeah? He wants to come back to Baltimore and catch a plane. That's right, him and the woman. Denver or someplace. That Atlanta trip was just a blind. Oh, no, uh-uh, he won't wait, Sergeant. So all you got to do is be waiting at the airport. Sure, I'm sure. You think I want to lose a thousand dollars? Well, we'd be leaving right away. He's in a hurry. Yeah, that's right. Now, you're not going to forget my name. It's Norris. E.E. E. Norris. Now, I aim to get that reward, Sergeant. Yeah? Yeah, that's it. Double E. Norris. All right, goodbye. Double, double crosser. Find out what you wanted? Yeah. Now, uh, I'd be willing to have you folks come along with me. I I got no hard feelings, you understand? Uh-huh. But since maybe you got a few hard feelings, I, I guess it's just as well you're heading west. Yeah. Mr. Norris and I are going to step out in front a moment, Della. Oh? Now, just a minute. I changed my mind. I don't much think that I will step out of this room with you, Mason. You scared? No, playing safe. Well, look, let's understand each other, Norris. I will not hand over that much money in here, and that is final. But now, look. The parking lot is well lighted. Well, let's think it over. Wait while we eat. No, no, that'd be too late. Too late for what? Well, uh, I mean, uh, you, you sure you got the money? Look in this wallet. Well? Okay, let's go outside. But we'll stop right outside. Oh, sure. Where are you going? To the parking lot. I've got a lot of money on me. I need light to count it. Oh. oh, yeah. You're getting a good break, you know that? Yeah. I sure can use that thousand. You know, I'm, I'm going to get shut of my wife. The what? Going to buy me a divorce. Always pecking and heckling me. How come I spend so much money? How come I'm gone so much? Uh, hey, now, listen. This is here. This is far now. Well, there's your car. We'll stand over by that. Now, I'm watching you. Oh, you're a cute lad, Norris. I wouldn't try to double-cross you. Huh? I said you're cute. Tricky. Well, cut out the talk and hand over the money. Hey, what are you looking at? That's funny. Hmm? What? That pretty girl there going in the restaurant. Girl? What? What girl? I don't see any... <sighs> Maybe you can't see, but you can feel, can't you? No, Norris, don't move. Oh, I ain't moving. Make sure you don't. What's that cold thing pressing against my neck? You mean this? Oh! God. Take that thing out of my neck. And I said don't move. Oh, I ain't, but... All right. Look. Bella? The parking lot's here is way over on the other side. Good, then we're all alone. You ain't gonna shoot me here. You can't. No. I know you've got better sense. You're than right. To... I won't shoot you here, but... Oh, now, stop talking like that. Then get in the car. You talk to him, miss. Now, you tell him. Let him have it here, baby. Oh, no, no, please. Don't wait, baby. Let him have no, it. No, I'd like to, and I will. It gives me the least bit of trouble. Now, get in the car. I ain't moving. The police... I are... talked to the Baltimore police, smart boy. They aren't coming. Oh, no. Now, get in. No, wait a minute. 
Stand still while I get your keys. You got them? Yeah. Here, you take them. And you drive, Della. Okay, baby. back to Baltimore. Watch your speedometer. Look out for a little side road a mile and a half up. Mile and a half? That's right. When you come to it, turn to the right. There's a concrete culvert. Oh. Okay, baby. And step on it. 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 Oh, Mr. Mason. You shut up. We'll turn up the road and get rid of this. Then we'll beat it out of town. Oh, Mr. Mason, please. Please, in an hour. Please, Mr. Mason. I said shut up. Oh, uh, I'm a poor man, Mr. Mason. You better enjoy this ride, Mr. Norris. Don't take that thing out of my neck. Let me turn around and look at you, Mr. Mason. Enjoy I, the I'm scenery, a... Norris. This is your last ride. Scenery, Norris. This is your last ride. Scenery, Norris. This is your last ride. Oh, Mr. Mason. You tried to double cross me. I got a wife and children. We'll send them flowers. Oh, you, you, you don't want to do nothing to me. Oh, there's the side oh, road. You're, you're just teasing. You, you Watch the really Ruts, it's a dirt road. Yeah, I see. It's a real bad road. Yeah, make as much time as you can. Right. I'll tell you when to stop. Okay, baby. Oh, no, please, Mr. Mason. No, don't turn around and be quiet or I'll let you have it now. All right, this is far enough, Della. We've come five miles, baby. All right, leave the car lights on. All right, Norris, outside. Oh, outside? You heard me. Oh, I, I don't want to get out. Let him have it in the car, baby. No, I don't want to spoil your upholstery. Oh, Mr. May. Out. Oh. All right, now just walk to the front of the car. Oh, now, Mr. May, you've got to listen to me. And take that gun out of my Let neck a minute. Let me do it, baby. Oh, stop me. talking that way, man. Stop here. Oh, Lord. Let me do it, Perry. Let me no, do it. No, this is my job. Oh, you, you push it through my neck. This guy tried to double-cross me. This is my job. But you can hold this a minute, Della. Oh, don't let her get her hands on that gun. Just hold it. Yeah, well, I cut the labels off this coat. Have you got it? Got it. Uh, well, I'll take the identification out of his wall. Oh, please, please listen, Mr. No. Wilson. All right, Della, let me have it again. Go ahead, blast him, baby. It's set, Morris. I'm going to let you have it. I, I ain't going to stand still. I'm going to run out of Come back here. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> Would you mind giving me back my lipstick, uh, baby? Uh, careful, it's loaded. <laughs> All right, Della. Now, back to Baltimore. Baltimore? Yes, it's nearest to the trains and we buses. We've got Norris's car. Norris is going to stop running sometime. And when he does, he's going to start to think. We could make Washington. Oh, I've pointed the trail for Denver. Are we still going to Atlanta? Yes, but separately. Separately? We've got to split oh, up. Now, I'll Perry. explain on the way back. Come on, get in, Bella. We are in a race now. Well, Perry Mason is right, as I can promise you. He and Della are in a race. A much more desperate race than even Perry Mason suspects. But more of that tomorrow. So be sure to join us, won't you? It's nine o'clock in the evening, three hours after the close of our last episode. As in the apartment of Kitty DiCarlo... Then you understand how I feel, Mr. F. Fred. Yes, and uh, it's, a, it's a good idea. Hmm. More coffee? Uh, no. Uh, a most intelligent idea, Catherine. Demanding the dory be turned over to you immediately is a very good move. Now, wait. I'm not asking for dory because I'm smart. Huh? I'm lonely for my little girl. Very lonely. Oh, oh of, of course. You're, you're a good woman, Catherine. Oh, it's so nice to hear you say so. Uh, you only want your little girl, but... Just the same, when May Grant hears what you're doing, she'll come out of hiding. Of course, you don't care about that. Oh, no. 
But when she does... She'll be punished. All of which doesn't dispose of Mason. You'll find him. I'd give a great deal, a very great deal to find Mason. See that he gets what's coming to him. He made a fool out of me. Oh, Oh, yes, he did. The newspapers are saying... Uh, never mind. I'd better go to my office. At this time of the evening? Yeah, I have to prepare those papers. We'll spring the action on William Grant tomorrow morning. And I'll have Dari in a few days. Not... Uh-huh. Now, I wonder if... Are you I'm... expecting a call? No. Well, you better answer it. I left word I'd be here. Hello? Why, right here. It's for you. Oh, thank you. Uh, Frederick Apps speaking. What's that? Baltimore. When? Norris, you say? What is it, Mr. Apt? Yes. Yes, yes, I'll, I'll be right down. What, what is it? A lead on Mason. A report that he's in Baltimore. Oh. I can't explain now. Where's my coat? But you can't... This yeah. could be the big break. Well, can't you take a minute and Not help? now, not now, Catherine. I've, I've got to go. Uh, uh, good night. Uh, you, you'll let me know. Yes, yes. I'll, I'll call you the moment I have time. <sighs> Must be a real lead. I guess I better call Anna. Well, answer it, Joel. Anna. Yes. I was just trying to call you. Mr. App just got... I heard. I was listening. Oh, checking on my phone calls, too. Hmm? Well, this time you can tell me what it's all about. App didn't? App left like he was on fire. He just told me Mason 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 was reported in Baltimore. He was. And he got away. Oh. App seemed to think he was... App thinks they're on the trail. I think they're following a false trail. Trail to where? Denver. Why false? You don't know where Mason's going. I know he started for Atlanta, riding with a traveling salesman. Norris? App mentioned his name. Yeah, Norris. Norris recognized him. But Mason got away before the police could nail him. But why Denver when Mason started for Atlanta? Mason's smart. Before May Grant escaped, he pointed a trail to Denver. So? And he let Norris overhear something. Something that made Norris think he was going to Denver from Baltimore. Then the Atlanta trip was just a blind. So the police seem to think. But they'll check Atlanta too, won't they? They'll check everywhere. But Mason's smart. Well, if you know he's going to Atlanta... That's where I'd go. And I'd get him, if I knew. Well, then it looks like you'll have to sit tight. No. But if you don't, Kitty. 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 Wasn't your husband from the South? Marcel. No, no. Lee Sloan, your first husband. Why, yeah. That's right. He was from the South. Mississippi. You're positive? Not Atlanta? No, no. He was from Mississippi. He was from... Wait a minute. Well? Lee had relatives in Atlanta, if that means anything. Catherine. He had an uncle, Thaddeus Sloan, but he's dead. Oh. Maybe his aunt's living. Well, you don't know? No. She was alive six or seven years ago. Well, then she might be living there now. And if she is... What about it? She could be Mason's lead. To what? Does this aunt know anything about the nursing home? Nursing home? Did you ever tell her ever anything? You should know. I'd never mention... Oh, did you? No! Well, that aunt's got something to tell Mason. Some information valuable enough to make him a voluntary fugitive. It fits together, Anna. Mason's going to Atlanta to find what out. What's Mrs. Sloan's address? I can't think, Anna. You've got to stop him. If Mason ever finds out what was going on in that nursing home... Shut room, up. If he finds out what I was helping you do... You told me you'd stop him, Anna. I told you to shut up. I don't even think about it. Don't think... You know why I drink like a fish sometimes? Why the sight of a kid makes my skin crawl? I never stop thinking about what went on in that... I told you to shut up. You can slap me. It doesn't change it. Sometimes when I get to thinking now about... Now, don't hand me that routine, dearie. You were nothing when I picked you up, and you haven't changed. You drink because you like to drink. And you enjoyed working at that nursing home. Maybe I did, then. Your trouble is that 
You've got a hangover from that. Like you got a hangover from drinking. Hangovers will never stop you from drinking or anything else. You see, I know you, Kitty. I guess I'm a bad girl, hmm? Through and through. You're right. It was fun. Like I got more fun out of acting innocent in court and watching May Grant squirm than I ever did acting in pictures. You know the most fun of all, Anna? What? Watching Marcel when I shot him. Yeah. I guess you are a bad girl, Kitty. Now, you get me that address, Kitty, and... Oh, uh, oh, long distance? I want to call it Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. Person to person. Meanwhile, hundreds of miles away in a small second-run movie theater in the city of Baltimore... Tell him. Oh, Perry, I thought you'd never get here. Oh, what's the matter? Why are you looking so unhappy? Well, do you realize how long you've been gone? I got here as fast as I could, Della. Will you look what's playing here? Wouldn't mm. you know? Kitty DiCarlo in Sweethearts of the Pioneers. Mm. Well, never mind that. Did you get my ticket? Yes, did you get mine? Yes. Now, your train leaves at 11.02. Okay, now here's your bus ticket. Your bus leaves at 11.30. Your baggage check is with your ticket. Yours too. Now, when you get to the station... You'll have to be careful. Norris is probably reported in. Well, by the time we leave... The... Listen, Della. Norris has a weird story to tell the police. If they listen at all, they'll question it. Well, that's right. Police are always swamped with leads when a reward is posted. That's it, exactly. But if they do listen to Norris, they'll realize that we've had several hours to get out of town. Yes. And reasonably, they'll expect us to have left town. Yeah. So they'll concentrate on the buses and trains that have already left for Denver and Atlanta. <sighs> We hope. Well, that's the way we've got to play it. We could wait a day and well, then... you're forgetting that public-spirited citizen who posted the reward. The woman? You can bet that she isn't waiting. We've got to get to Atlanta, and without delay. Yes, of course you're right. Well, all right, tell me what to do when I get to the station. Well, don't try to keep from attracting attention. What? Well, don't advertise yourself as Della Street, of course. But get a red cap to carry your stuff. Be a little fussy about your accommodations. Load yourself down with books and magazines and candy and so on. What about you? I'll get on the bus. I've got to. We've been held up long enough. Mm. For which we can thank that public-spirited citizen behind Kitty the car. Mm. Well, I guess that's everything. Yeah, I guess that's it. Well, what do we do now? Mm. We uh, might as well go in and watch Sweethearts of the Pioneers. Are you kidding? Safest place for us. Oh, Perry. No, just a minute. Something else. When you get to Atlanta... Register in a hotel under a fictitious name, of course, and get a few hours sleep. And meet you when and where? Uh, one o'clock, Atlanta time. One where? Make it the city park, southeast corner. Southeast corner. Mm. Isn't that uh, where there's a statue of General Sherman or someone? <clears throat> Della, there is probably a statue, but believe me, not a statue of General Sherman. Hmm? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, let's go in and uh, watch the movie, hmm? Well, even if Perry Mason's plans do work out, and he and Della get where they're going, we know there is trouble waiting for them in Atlanta. Trouble and danger and excitement. So join us again tomorrow by all means, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> 